in a live stream on our website, www.kingsboroughma.gov. A recording of this meeting will be available through the video on demand portion of our website. Open meeting laws require that any member of the audience who intends on recording either video or audio so declare that now. Seeing none, after instruction from the State Fire Marshal and the Tingsboro Fire Chief, in the event of an emergency, there is an exit directly across from me at the rear of this room and one to my left. With that, can I ask everybody to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag to uh, introduce themselves, and I'll start with Larry. Uh, Larry Clawson, Finance Committee. Ed Smith, Finance Committee. Shannon McAndrew, Executive Assistant. Mike Moran, Select Board. Good evening, Eric Eldridge. Good evening, Katerina Kalabokas. Good evening, Matt Hansen, Town Administrator. Good evening, Colin Wiesel, Assistant Town Administrator. Good evening, Ron Schneider, Finance Committee. Scott Pazerski, Finance Committee. Okay, uh, first on the agenda is meeting minutes. Can I have motion to for the meeting minutes, please? I move that the Board of Selectmen approve uh, the regular session meeting minutes for June 13th, 2022, and to approve but not release the executive session meeting minutes for June 13th, <laughs> 2022. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. That passes 4-0-0. Uh, next executive session meeting minutes, please. You did that. You did that. You got them both. I got them both. Yes, sir. Okay. So that passes four zero zero. Also, <laughs> then. Uh, so we have quite a few uh, public hearings. Uh, but if anybody has any comments uh, that does not retain, does not uh, uh, about the public hearings, uh, we have citizens of business time. If anybody wants to talk about any other topics, seeing none. Uh, first on the agenda uh, is uh, the town administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as an added convenience for our residents and to help reduce the numbers of recyclables that end up in the trash, uh, large pieces of cardboard can be disposed of in the containers in the satellite parking lots of the middle school as well as the highway department. Uh, residents and businesses were happy to announce saved a total of $290,984 in the period of January through March as part of the town's municipal aggregation with First Point Power, which is administered by our consultant group, the Colonial Power Group. Uh, so these savings reflect the difference between the national grid basic service rate and the rate that's competitively bid through the town's municipal aggregation. So to date, since 2017, when we started the aggregation, residents and businesses have saved uh, over $1 million now with this last quarter in savings. So uh, just a great milestone uh, for the town and showing that the aggregation has really been working. The Middle School Building Committee interviewed six construction management firms and ultimately selected Fontaine Brothers Incorporated. And if any residents or members of the board are interested in seeing work they've done on similar K through 12 schools, we put a link to their website here in the town administrator's report. Um, we're happy to announce that paving is complete on Danforth Road and Jocks Road. Uh, some additional side work, sidewalk work and cleanup work will continue, but the paving itself is complete and looks great. Residents can now sign up on the sewer website for discharge alerts. Uh, as part of the Library of Things, the IT department helped the library get Chromebooks up and running mm -hmm. so that patrons can check them out along with a wireless hotspot. So if any residents are having difficulty accessing the internet, the library has a fantastic resource for you available. The summer library program registrations are very high and circulation rates for the last month are higher than any time in the last five years, including our pre-COVID time. So the library has really rebounded uh, very well and they're just about to start their five year strategic planning uh, review process this September. The planning board has opened their hearing on the 500,000 square foot warehouse, uh, proposed warehouse at 424 Middlesex Road. The 50 Westford Road Abaps Religious Temple campus is moving forward and they've informed us that they're targeting a groundbreaking in the fall of this year or the spring of 2023, depending on how um, <coughs> their final bid and design goes this summer. The Recreation Department is seeking vendors and I won't steal all of her uh, thunder, but seeking vendors, crafters and sponsors for the block party, which is going to be held on August 27th and Alex will be discussing that in a little bit uh, <coughs> more detail shortly. Uh, in addition to that, one or two more quick updates for the Board of Selectmen. 39 Althea Ave, the Board of Selectmen did extend the deadline to make back tax payments on that property, and to date we have not received those tax payments. Mm -hmm. 
board updated. We're still waiting for a response from the lawyer. And Senator Kennedy's office uh, called on Friday last minute and asked if we had any large transportation projects that could fit into the bond bill uh, that the state is approving this Thursday. And Senator Kennedy added our $1.2 million um, dollar crossroad project and intersection project that the board is planning to put through the TIP process. If it makes it onto the transportation bond bill, that would be um, one other potential avenue for funding if the governor ultimately released it. So um, Senator Kennedy's going to put that forward and hopefully it will get included in the bond bill this Thursday. Um, and again, we'd have a few years to try and get the governor to release the funds after that. Um, and Colin? Any questions, any questions for Matt? Um, I'd just like to make one comment. I'd like to really thank Matt for taking the initiative uh, you know, to saving the residents money uh, on their electrical bills. Uh, $1 million is quite a milestone. Uh, you know, the residents don't need to do anything. Uh, it's just that their rates are reduced because uh, of the effort that Matt has put into that. So $1 million, uh, the residents have saved. Uh, you really didn't have to do anything. There's not too many times you get a bill to your house and uh, you just save money and you don't really have to do anything. So uh, thank you for that, Matt. That's good. Any other questions for Matt? Colin. Thank you. The Commission on Disability is still seeking candidates to serve as a volunteer leader for their Neighborhood Brigade initiative. The Neighborhood Brigade is a nonprofit that organizes volunteers in uh, communities to help neighbors in need. The chapter leader is responsible for being the point of contact between the local chapter and the larger Neighborhood Brigade. The nonprofit itself does a lot of the work, including background checks, maintaining their website, and things like that. So it's not a, a big lift, but they do require that at least one resident serve as the volunteer leader before we can initiate the program. So if anybody is interested, they can reach out to our office to learn more. Some capital project updates. There's a few capital projects um, before the board tonight for contract awards, so I'll skip those. But we are preparing an invitation for bids right now for the police department station maintenance, which will include the replacement of six exterior doors and their exterior handrails. Bids will be available on July 20th and due on August 10th. All of the vehicles that were ordered as a part of the FY23 capital plan, um, the orders have been placed. The highway vehicles likely won't be delivered until the fall, but we're expecting the building commissioner's vehicle to be delivered sometime this month. Guardian Energy, which is our energy consultant that helps with Green Communities Project, has ordered all of the materials for the elementary school LED lighting and transformer project. The transformer is significantly delayed, so work on that likely won't start until the end of August or early September. That's funded partially by a grant from the Commonwealth and partially a match from the Capital Asset Committee. The Tingsboro Elementary School playground design is now officially complete. Site work will commence in August and the playground will be fully installed by November 1st if the supply chain issues stay at the level that they're at right now. Ideally, we would have had the whole project done this summer, but the supply chain is just not making that possible. Um, but that project is likely to come in significantly under budget. Supplies for the Scarlet Brook Culvert project are on order and work will be scheduled in the coming weeks. The contract for this work was approved by the board at its meeting in June. And the engineering department is finalizing the design for Madeline Terrace drainage project. And I expect that um, we'll put that project out to bid next month and award a contract in August. Thank you. Any questions for Colin? Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, relative to the culverts, um, any indication on like what lead time, in other words, do we think we're, we're gonna be able to get these done before winter or is this? Yes, okay. I believe so. The, the specialized work being done on the Scarlet Brook culvert saw some significant lead times. That's since resolved itself. Most of the work that we're doing on Madeline Terrace is routine and doesn't require any specialized materials. So I don't expect that there will be a significant delay on that. Thank you. Any other questions for Colin? Okay. Um, uh, this time, Colin, if you wouldn't mind that uh, Allison take your, your seat for a second. Uh, I'd like to call Allison up for the public hearing. Good evening. Uh, can we have, have a motion to open the public hearing, please? I move that the Board of Selectmen open the public hearing and waive the reading of the hearing notice and the legal ad. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, that passes five zero zero. Thank you, good evening. Um, coming before you this evening for our annual uh, road closure and liquor license for the uh, block party uh, being held August 27th, 2022. Mm, Thank you. Um, so we are looking to close the road, um, Kendall Road day of, and we are looking to close Winslow Road two days 
prior for a setup of um, staging and, and whatnot. Any questions from the board for Allison? Um, more of a comment um, that you know we've we've typically closed that that Winslow Road right several yes. days before so that's that's nothing new and 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 all of kind of the standard procedures are the way we've done it for the last you know two years obviously taking a break for the COVID years right. yes yes any questions for the board no I was going to make sure that people were aware that it's very similar to what happened in the past and that everything has gone pretty smooth and people are now used to it yes any comments from uh, any, any residents uh, about this seeing none um, any other questions we're all set uh, can I leave oh, we need to close the public hearing. yeah I move that the Board of Selectmen close the public hearing second the motion and a second all those in favor <laughs> aye Opposed, abstain, that passes by zero zero. Um, okay, now it's deliberation of the board. Uh, any other questions from the board? Then can I, can I, can I have a motion please? I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the entertainment license and one day liquor license for Saturday, August 27th, 2022 from 11 a.m. through 9 p.m. and approve the road closure permits for Winslow Road from 7 a.m. on Thursday, August 25th, 2022 through 7 a.m. on Monday, August 29th, 2022, for Kendall Road on Saturday, August 27th, 2022, from 7 a.m. through 9.30 p.m., and to implement a lane restriction in the right southbound lane on Middlesex Road on Saturday, August 27th, 2022, from 7 a.m. through 9.30 p.m. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. That passes 5 0, zero. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Alice. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. I just, while well, Allison's here, I think it it's only appropriate that we acknowledge as a board and, and for the public her <laughs> recognition that she received from the state as one of the Commonwealth's um, unspoken hero heroines. So um, it's fitting while you're here, Allison, for us to just thank say you. thank you for all that you Next on the agenda is the approve the FY22 year end budget transfers. Uh, Mr. Town Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I won't read every uh, line item on the list because there's a few small ones, but I do have a memo put together in which I want to read a few of the highlights. Thank you, Colin. Um, <clears throat> so I know there's a few members on, on this board and the Finance Committee, so I uh, just want to start by saying so for the year end transfers we're not asking for additional funding at this time we're just um, asking to cover transfers within and between departments um, all the to funding overall has been approved as part of the fiscal year 22 budget uh, all of the additional surplus funds after these transfers are approved uh, will ultimately become free cash to be reallocated at a future town meeting uh, we had a total surplus of approximately one million dollars in fiscal year 2022 um, so happy to report that um, majority of the fiscal year 2022 year-end transfers are covered within departments um, with small transfers between unspent salary and expense line items. Uh, those totaled $187,867.52. Several departments, including the Communication Center, Fire, and the Council on Aging, required additional funds to be transferred to offset their year-end deficits. And those remaining deficits can be covered by any of the other accounts that had a surplus Sometimes in the past we've picked multiple accounts and this year it was just easier to use the health insurance line item because there was such a big surplus in that one line item we're able to cover all of the um, other deficits with just a very small portion of the health insurance uh, turnbacks. So we had $722,308.85 turned back in health insurance. Um, that is somewhat a one-time occurrence. We always budget a little bit of a cushion in that line item, but we actually received a one-month premium holiday this year because uh, Maya and basically with COVID, less people going to the doctor, uh, they had a surplus and the consortium we're part of essentially gave that money back in the form of a credit so they didn't charge us for one month. So um, we had a very large uh, surplus in health insurance this year. But as I mentioned, those few remaining accounts required $129,727.73 in additional transfers. <clears throat> few of these transfers are the result of personnel cost of living adjustments that weren't finalized yet at the beginning of the fiscal year. 
the total amount of funding for debt was included in the budget, but the breakdown of debt principal versus interest hadn't been finalized yet, so that's now finalized and we can transfer that principal over. Uh, the street light account is showing a deficit. Uh, it's really more of a <coughs> paperwork issue between National Grid, the DPU, and our, our consultants who handle um, our purchase of energy credits from the landfill. So we actually have $100,000 in credits on the street light account that we're working to reallocate. You can only change them and allocate them once per year, so they've been building up on that account. We're in the process of getting those transferred over now. Um, the police department had 48,000 in change in deficit accounts, but that was offset by about 75,000 in surpluses from some of their other accounts. So they had about 26,000 in surpluses. We'll be transferring over to the communications center to offset their deficit. And it's not noted anywhere on here, but I did just add a note in my file that we do have about $10,000 in addition from the police department that will be returned because Maya provides insurance coverage for injured on duty claims, but that money basically comes back to the general funds. We can't pull it into their department to offset the salary. So sometimes their salary line item goes into a deficit. The insurance company provides us the money, but we have to go to town meeting to reallocate it. So we just transfer the funds um, <coughs> from another account. That 10,000 from Maya will just fall to free cash. The communication center salary deficit was predominantly re the result of the group's co first collective bargaining agreement since they formed a separate separate union. That was a total of about $67,000 of their um, overage um, in retro salary and educational incentives. That was done based on a review of comps and you'll remember the communication center line item went up quite significantly in fiscal 23. So that amount moving forward had been discussed um, and moving forward will be part of the budget. And Unfortunately, they did have several staff illnesses this year without going into great detail. Um, about 32,000 in unanticipated overtime was a cause of that event. Um, those three or four individuals who had to be out for an extended period of time. As you can imagine, when you only have one or two people on a shift for the communication center, if one person's out, you have to backfill that person with an overtime shift. Um, so some overtime is always carried for vacations, sick time, et cetera, but for extended illnesses, those are uh, rare occurrences. Uh, in addition, did just want to note that in the past, we've had money available in the PSAP grant in the police department to cover overages and dispatch salary, but the majority of that funding for the next few years, <coughs> can you hear me, Ronnie? Oh, I'm okay. Um, is being used to replace our dispatch console, so that funding wasn't available to us this year. Uh, the fire department's net deficit was about $37,000. Um, this was the final year of the fire department's first union contract, and a few things were still being worked out, essentially. Uh, we do believe those line items are appropriately funded in fiscal 23. do want to note that the Ambulance Enterprise Fund actually ran a surplus of $87,000, and typically it's run as one department, so essentially they washed, but due to the nature of the Ambulance Enterprise as an enterprise fund, we can't actually transfer that over even though most of the staff are paid out of both accounts, the actual revenue in that account versus what we spent out was over, so that money will stay in the enterprise fund. <clears throat> Council on Aging clerical wages line item ran a deficit because the administrative assistant um, contractually received a small increase in pay during an extended absence of the COA director. Um, legal counsel ran a bit high this year by about $6,000. Again, that's due to several costly employee disciplinary matters that were unforeseen at the beginning of the fiscal year. Uh, if you have any questions, I have also included for the Selectmen and the Finance Committee uh, a simple year-end transfer list that shows all the transfers to and from, a motion, and then a full copy of the uh, year-to-date expense report, which has every, uh, every single line item in it. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, we also the finance committee here, uh, you know, to also discuss this. And I, I meant to uh, ask Ron if you wanted to open the finance committee meeting. Uh. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I hereby uh, declare the finance committee meeting open. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'll leave it up to you and the finance committee to ask the first questions if they have any uh, from Matt. Man, I took a look at everything. I, I don't have any questions. It looks like space just transfers. Uh, the one thing I am happy to see is a surplus on the ambulance enterprise fund because I, I know a lot of people talked when we first got the ambulance that was going to be running a deficit every year. I knew last year we did run a, a small deficit, correct? Yeah, about 60000 last year. But this year, uh, you know, surplus of 87, which is good. It's always good when you have a surplus. Mr. Clawson, any questions or comments from you? No questions. Mr. Lambert, any questions? Mr. Pazersky? 
I'm all set to. I think these transfers are, are just routine accounting. Um, so I have no, no further comments or questions. Thank you. I will move the board. Uh, select one witness for me. Thank you. The surplus in the ambulance, is that a result of us having already made the final payment? I mean, that was a big deal that we had. We were running the payments on two ambulances that we had with startups. So was that a result of that or our collections high? Uh, a little bit of both. The last ambulance payment was uh, in the thirty um, in the thirty thousand dollar range, so that's probably uh, almost half of the surplus. The extra fifty thousand in surplus just had to do with um, um, the ambulance runs being a little higher than expected. Because we don't make that. a lot of money on the runs, so it would, I guess, be a result of collections. And you could really say collections. I mean, our collection rate has to be up, or when we bumped up the increase. I mean, trying to understand going forward, we did an adjustment on the rates that we were charging for the ambulances. So did that, you know, kind of correct itself in terms of cost, or is it our collection, you know, we did well during collection rates, which we might not have done during COVID? Yeah, the, in speaking with the fire chief, the, um, the runs have gone up. Um, the collections and the runs don't always match up. Sometimes we have a lot of runs and it happened to be a month with a lot of Medicare pickups and they don't pay very well versus the private insurance. So uh, it's not an exact ratio, but um, we were basically trying to be conservative with the budget this year because we had um, run the deficit last year. But um, <clears throat> I think the runs are where we expect them to be. So that surplus is what we'd expect to see in a year where we don't have an ambulance payment. It may only be another one or two years before we need to start purchasing a new ambulance. Remember the uh, fire chief did request one through capital this year. So if he's not getting it through capital, he may very likely have to take his frontline ambulance, make it his new backup and put a new payment on. In the first few years, the payments might be 50 or $60,000. So I don't expect um, the $80,000 to stay every year moving forward as a surplus if we're buying a new ambulance soon, but it's about what we'd expect. <coughs> Thank you. Select Moran, any questions? Uh, no, I don't have any questions at this time. Select Moran. No questions at this time. No questions, okay. thank you. Uh, I'd just like to say I was, I was glad to see when the final tally came that the Labor Council, uh, you know, fees went way down from the previous year. Uh, we had a lot of uh, cleanup to do, uh, and we still were able to uh, reduce that, and I'm hoping to reduce that uh, even more this year. I don't have any further questions either. Okay, uh, with that, uh, can I have a motion? I move that the board approve the fiscal year 22 year end budget transfers as presented. Second. So does the finance committee take a separate vote or are we supposed to vote with us? It, where it's posted as a joint meeting, they can vote at the same time if they want to call it or they can take a separate vote, but it's appropriate to take a vote um, collectively as long as it gets at least six votes. Vote with you, it's fine. Okay, vote with us. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That passes 10 0 0. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. <coughs> Chairman? Chair, um, we, so that we don't get in the way of the rest of your busy agenda, uh, the Finance Committee is going to move their meeting to down the hall to the next conference room. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next on the agenda is a public hearing for the craft brewery. to open the public hearing, please. I move that the Board of Selectmen open the public hearing and waive the reading of the hearing notice in the Legal Act. Second. The motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That passes 5 zero, 0 Okay, we're open. So uh, take it away. Who's going to uh, start? License Administrator, Shannon McAndrew. Yes, so included in your packet tonight is an application for a special permit for a craft brewery and tap room under section to 1130 and to 1144 of the Tingsboro zoning bylaws. The applicant, Leigh Martinson, on behalf of Modest Roots Brewing, is requesting a special permit to operate the craft brewery and tap room at this site. Currently, this business is operating only as a craft brewery, but would like to add the addition of a tap room. 
Mr. Martinson is here tonight to explain the application and to answer any questions that the board may have. In reviewing this application, our office requested comments from all relevant departments, and there were no adverse comments beyond the Board of Health, noting that if there will be service of food, a license from the Board of Health will also be required. Additionally, we advertised this hearing in the Lowell Sun on June 27th and July 4th, 2022, and the applicant sent notices to abutters by certified mail. Okay. Would you like to uh, make an opening comment? Certainly. Uh, on behalf of myself and the team of Modest Roots, you see strategically located in the middle advertising <laughs> for us, uh, we wanted to thank the town for how cooperative you guys have been with us. We've been at this a, a couple of years and tried to get it going at a couple of locations and um, found it challenging, to, to say the word, with the onset of COVID to work with a group of folks who see the value as we see it and we're, we're willing to help us uh, we appreciate that been open since april 1st uh, things are going well and when we were working with uh, eric and other members of the committee to help you write your bylaws and, and get it passed which i understand recently happened the state finally accepted them um, you know we had always had the intention of hopefully having a tap room right uh, given our location for those of you who don't know where we are we're strategically located behind honeydew donuts in a 1250 square foot building probably smaller than this uh, as uh, right next to the storage place you know we we're small and you know people drive up to get our stuff and we'd like to be able to let them sample it as the state intended when they put this law into place mm -hmm. so that's the uh, next logical step uh, you know, we and when I say small, we are small in that every time we brew, we make two kegs. Okay, <laughs> that's that's it. It's called a one barrel system. Great, so, yeah. we work all week to be open Friday afternoons for about three hours and about six hours on Saturday. And uh, you know, knock on wood, sales keep going the way they do. And um, you know, then we do the process all over again. And when I say we, I mean them. You know, <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> That's what they do. So you put the beer in the kegs and then you put it in cans, one at a time, okay. hand by hand, roll them up, close them up, and you know that that's that's how it works. Um, you know, we're, I, I'm happy to answer any questions. I could go on for hours. I, I'm a lawyer by training, so I'll not do that. <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you. Uh, any residents have any comments about the special hearing? Seeing none, I'll open it up to the board. Uh, Selectwoman Widdestrom, do you have any questions? Um, yes. So, with the um, with the opening of the tap room, do they have to serve food if they're serving alcohol, or are you only doing sample sizes so that doesn't require you to have a food license? But if somebody wanted to come in and drink a, f is somebody going to be allowed to come in and drink a full beer? But if they did, obviously, you would have to serve food, right? That's uh, the answer to that question is no. So the special permit, according to your bylaws, allows you to require us to do food. You know, and I went back and forth with Eric on this because the state law does not require it, okay? And obviously, an operation of our side, we can't support that. We, we can't. I mean, we barely have enough room for our gear and uh, enough room to, to put tables there. So our idea and our hope was, you know, to get involved with some of the folks uh, locally here, you know, pizza delivery, hang out, order a pizza, that'd be great. I mean, everybody loves donuts, right? What goes better with beer than donuts? You know, we, we can do that. But the direct answer is no. You know, unless you, if you were to require us to do food, we wouldn't do it. We, we just can't support it. So, we had talked um, in the past when the bylaw was being developed. If a really small operation such as this had, <coughs> such as this had gone in, the food requirement that the board may want to be con consider could be something as small as bag chips or bag pretzels, just so patrons who you know, feel the need to have something while they're drinking would have something available, but that could be a mere minimum. So I just want to clarify, food wouldn't necessarily mean the board has to require you to have a pizza oven or have anything like that. If the board wanted something you know, very minimal, um, it's fully your discretion based on the bylaw, but that might be, that was something that was at least discussed when the bylaw was being conceived. Got it. I mean, I guess, you know, the, the intent behind, you know, serving food both you know from the state law and and and, and others and and I and I, I I'm not saying I 
think it's a necessity there, but you know, somebody could come in and obviously consume a few full-size beers and not have anything to eat, and that potentially is a problem, or, it, or view it similar to like a bar. They come in and sit down and have a few beers and stuff, and there's no food. We require bars to serve food yep. um, to kind of keep that um, you know, intoxication level, right? Um, down or, or and, and require it. I guess, you know, the question becomes, you know, do you have a limit on what people can come in and consume um, if you're not serving food? Well, there's no state requirement, you know, to say, but there is, you know, common sense requirement. We don't want to be, I mean, when I give this presentation at other towns, I mean, that's a, a common misconception that a craft brewery is like a bar. I mean, I, I had to do this in Bill Ricca, and I had a whole presentation on what these things are and, and what those, those things aren't. So, for example, the town approved another permit just like this down the road for a monster operation, I would call it. I mean, they're going full-blown pizza ovens, massive, you know, massive, massive operations. We are so small that... <laughs> You know, that's just not really a, a possibility. You know, our hope is there are licensed food truck vendors that we can work with and bring them in. You know, I, I don't want people to drive up there and not be able to get something to eat if they don't want to. Um, our, our friends over at Navigation Brewery who were at your block party last year, you know, they, they don't serve food at their place and they're a much bigger operation than we are. But they bring in trucks if they can. You know, that, that's Very our intent. familiar with that setup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, that's sort of the spirit of, of what we're going for right now. That's all the questions I have at the moment. Thank you. Courtney Moran. Uh, I just have a few questions. Um, one is, uh, I was unaware that, so I'm very new to the select board. I was just recently elected, so I was unaware of this establishment existed in that area. So you might see my face pop in there to <laughs> try some. Oh, I, I, I hope two so. Two of those kegs. <laughs> but, um, Bring some of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Up until now, you couldn't try them, so. Yeah. <laughs> until, yeah, up until now, you couldn't try them. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. But um, so I'm just curious, what, what type of beer is it or alcohol that's made there? Is it? Uh, yeah, so it's under the state's farmer craft brewer license, right? So people who are familiar with that, the state incentivizes people to basically take their home brewing operations and try to commercialize them, and they okay. give you a lot of incentives because the overhead's pretty low, and you can you know, make your time, take a beer. So we right now have six beers that we've put into production. We have uh, an easy drinking stout, which is my favorite, known as Susie is a Headbanger, named after the song. <laughs> the cans are fantastic. If you're not a stout drinker, you'll like this one. Uh, we have a couple of uh, IPAs. One's called Mob of Emus. The other is Blessing of Norwals, so collective nouns of animals. Uh, we have a uh, another one called Pandemonium of Parrots, which is made of something called POG, which I believe stands for passion fruit, orange, and guava, which is like a Hawaiian thing, which is hard to get. It's pretty exclusive, so you may want to call ahead to make sure it <laughs> we have it. We have a, a blonde ale called Heart of Glass, which is also named after the Blondie song with another fantastic can. And then uh, soon to be released, although this is a public hearing, uh, a cream ale, which has not been named yet, uh, which we're working on. And then we have a Hefeweizen too, which I don't know the name of either. But you know, we, Tom, the gentleman back here, yeah. makes all this stuff. It's been to brewer school. It's been something he's been passionate about for more than 10 years, I would say, you know, kind of all over the place, so, you know, a real, and that's his father, Bill, sitting next to him, who shares in that, uh, it, it's a, really a father and son operation, you know, they're, the, they're on the front lines, and I help with the licensing. And well, I just <laughs> tried to help you get free marketing, too, with just asking. Yeah, yeah, right. come on down, you know, <laughs> I heard there's a block party coming in, you know, <laughs> what goes better with a block party than, than beer? So. I'm all set, thank you, Chairman. Yeah. Chairman Elbert? Um, yeah, just a couple questions. So, um, how many people do you anticipate? How many seats do you anticipate being available? So, you know, so you, we go through this all the time. So, I'll answer your question directly, which is less than 49. The reality of our operation is we probably can't even sustain that. You know, th think about it. We, we're selling out now <coughs> in cans. And if you're trying to reserve some of that beer to serve, you know, while you're on site, it, it's going to be tough. I mean, you can run the occupancy numbers, which which we've done. You know, you're looking at you know, f 54 people is what it says. We'd never be able to support that. You know, with three employees, we got parking for days. You know, we're open such limited times when no one else is in the building. You know, really out of the way. So that's the idea. You know, I mean, obviously we 
want as big an occupancy as we can have mm -hmm. on the off chance we could ever grow. But I think our reality is if we wanted to grow, we'd have to move. <laughs> We want to stay in Kingsboro. You know, we've we've got a plan for that. Our, our landlord is fantastic. The town, like I said, they you guys could not have been more gracious and helpful. So, what else? Uh, just relative to that. So I, I know that we were talking about the the food situation, and you know, it's given the amount of of beer that's available. Um, you know, not having that capacity. Um, is there anything that, um, Matt, are there any restrictions that we would put on this? So let's say they have a, a manufacturing facility that somewhere else where they could then do more than what that capacity is. And then we start running into that situation where food could be an issue or, you know, if they're able to take care of those 49, is there anything that um, we have on the application that indicates that it's for this size building, this size capacity, um, and if there's a material change that they would have to come before the board. So it would be probably smart to add that to the application that um, this special permit for this seating and this capacity and with this particular food limit that you may or may not put on is specific only to production that would be done at this facility. So as a craft brewery, they can only sell their, their product, but if they were to have their product maybe also manufactured at another site, they wouldn't be able to bring it here to increase their sales without having to modify the special permit. So you could clarify that in the special permit, um, that it is only for production from this particular site. Um, and then again, short of that, it would be if you wanted to add, again, maybe that some prepared food um, is available, such as bag chips or, or something that um, you could leave it up to their discretion, but I'd, I would probably recommend that they have at least something available. Again, it doesn't have to be food they prepared, but just prepared food available. Um, yeah, my, my, sorry. My, our, I haven't had the pleasure of working with your health department yet. Um, you know, some are better than others. You know, I mean, we want to work with you guys, mm -hmm. right? A, a limitation on stuff that's produced there. It's hard to find a contract uh, brewer, but if the reality is if we want to offer, let's say, more types of beer, right, we can only make one at a time. If we wanted to make our stout, that means we can't make our IPA. There may be a time we may want to contract to have someone help us. For example, if there is a block party coming up in order to meet demand, you know, you can only work so much and do so much. We, we could do that. That would be a hindrance that, you know, as an unforeseen situation where we could be in trouble. We wouldn't want to run afoul of that. Yeah, that, that was where I was going next, was based on those two things, was to ask yeah. whether that would be a burden for you folks, um, both if we were to put some limitation as to um, manufacturing and the amount that's there, um, drank at that premises, and then also from a food standpoint, you know, it could be making a vending machine available where there's chips or making it so you provide bag chips, things like that. I'm not talking about anything that would be prepared. Are either, it sounds like the first one is a burden. Uh, potential burden. Potential yes. burden yeah. for you. What about the, the food? Today? Yeah, you want us to put a vending machine, I'm sure you know we can find someone to, to do that. Yeah. My experience with those is you're kind of required to meet a minimum on that kind of stuff and they someone may pull their contract but I'm, I'm totally shooting from the hip here on this one. But the reality, like you know, we want to do it. So if that's if that's what it is, we got to have. Uh, from where I grew up, they used to have the little black racks with the chips on there. Walk up, pick them up. As long as we don't have, you know, burdensome interactions with the health department on, you know, what needs to happen beyond whatever, you know, that's I assume fine, right? Yeah, Tom and Victor. We just took a vote. So sure. yeah. <laughs> so Michael, Michael, you had a question. So the special permit, how long is it? The special permit um, essentially would be in, in, in perpetuity for this business owner. Um, the special permit conditions typically um, require change in ownership to um, be, no, you know, the board be notified. But as long as they continue to run it, the special permit itself won't have an expiration. Um, you know, but again, one other thing to consider where there are still a few unknowns might be, uh, you know, hours of operation, for example, um, if that's limited in the special permit because you're concerned about um, the size and scope, 
Um, what, did you have specific uh, hours in mind? I didn't. Well, I want Tom to work as much as he can, but unfortunately, he has a full-time job as well. <laughs> so that's uh, as do I. Um, the reality is, we, we have a dance studio that's in there too, and as a condition of our lease, we won't be open when they're in session. We have great neighbors, right? So you know, you don't as much as I'm sure some of the parents would love to come while their <laughs> sons and daughters are doing dance. <laughs> um, you know, that's not really the type of operation we are. So, um, you know, right now we're talking Fridays. We, you know, our basic hours are Fridays five to eight, and you know, we'll, we, we limit them however we want. Saturday, we're like noon to six. We obviously want the tap room to be open, you know, later in the summer and if, if we can. You may throw in a Thursday or Sunday afternoon football every now and then. It's just we, it's really Tom and Tom's mom and, and, and his dad who are doing all this stuff. Now, I can work the cash register, just not very well <laughs> on purpose, so I don't, they don't ask me to do it. Um, but that, that's really it. But we, you know, what, propose something, we'll be happy to, to talk it over, you know. It's, uh, Maybe just one other way to address the issue of ramping up production and offsite production. If they, you know, were able to do that and, and they wanted to stay open till 10, 11, 12 and grow their operations, they'd have to come back and discuss it. If you limited the hours now, it would reduce naturally how much they can sell. Yeah. Uh, Cyclone call votes. I mean, my comment would be right, you guys are beyond tiny with two of you doing microbrew, right? And most of brewing is cleaning and doing other stuff anyway, right? So from the way that I'm looking at it is first and foremost is I really would like you to grow, right? Yeah, no, we would love that too. I want you, it's better for us and better for our residents if you're open more hours, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's better, right? So anything we can do to help you grow is great. I do think it's a good thing to anticipate in the future, but I think anticipating <coughs> them making enough beer to have to have it somewhere else and cart it in on a regular basis is quite down the road from where we are now. I do understand the food issue. Um, it goes both ways. At the end of the day, I know if I'm going to a brewery, even if I can buy chips, I'll stay for a little bit longer, have an extra beer or two if I'm hungry. I think it would be beneficial even for the brewery to offer something small, a bag of chips, a bag of pretzels, et cetera. And to select, uh, select Wilma Winnerstrom's point, for the drunkenness level, right? Even a bag of something, right? Will help immensely. So, uh, you know, I'm in favor of having even just that chip rack that you were talking about, nothing substantial, right? But something like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. But at the end of the day, I think it is, especially because of, we want you to outgrow that space. We want you to stay in Kingsborough. We want to work with you, right? And anything that we can do to facilitate that is better. Right, so I don't know if, if I would be in favor of putting too many constraints on this, just because I think we can't really see where they're going to grow to, what their needs are going to be, and because they are so small. So, you know, in the future, if it does become a problem, or if they have more needs, right, then maybe we can address it then, right? We approve the special permit as is, maybe add in some requirement for food, and then, I mean, they're so small, they're not even open two full business days, really. No, not even, we, it's fine, we, you know, we. We talk about, you know, is it a good week? Is it a bad week? Like, you know, in April, we sold out. Like, we've been open for five hours. Like, you know, you know, when you've got how many hundreds of hours into production and planning and permitting and, and everything like that. It's and having thief will help improve that, right? People. Oh yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Have their, and I'm all for the having the thief and having the tap room, right? That will allow people to try different beers, right? One glass yeah. of this, one glass of that. They come back with their friends, and it allows you to grow, right? If you don't have a tap room going to be very difficult for you to grow. So I support the tap room yep. all the way. I think that's a fantastic idea. Uh, good luck to the two of you. Not only is it just two of you, it's all family. So I wish yeah, you it's all good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and I, I just, I, we want to work with you. You've been great so far. Thank you for working with us. I, my opinion would be to approve the special permit as it is, uh, along with having a food requirement of some sort. And then we just move forward from there. Mr. Chair, I could support that. That's that's my mindset as well. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, you know, I, I would agree with that too. And I, and I think if we just put it as, you know, if they would sell some prepackaged food, uh, okay. would be, you know, then we can decide what that is. Chips, cookies, pretzels, um, you know, just at a brewery in Kittery, Maine, and they had a popcorn machine there, uh, you know, which is another idea, right? So I think anything that you have that you can have sell prepackaged food, I think would help you out. Uh, you know, you don't have to have a kitchen or kitchen requirements. Um, 
know, and uh, you know, we do want to work with you. Uh, we're glad you opened your business here. Thank you very much. Uh, their beer is very good. I have had some. Um, I had to bring it home, uh, of course. <laughs> Disappointing, uh, right? It's a long ride. Home, it's still very good. Not uh, a long ride for Mike and I. We live right around the corner. <laughs> a long ride, though. <laughs> Perfect. So <laughs> I, I would also support uh, just putting one, one little addendum on that they have, uh, they have some prepackaged food uh, to be sold at, at, at the brewery w when you're open. Yeah. And that gives you a lot of flexibility. And I'm seeing nods in the back, so I think they're, uh, they're in agreement also. Well, we appreciate that. You know, it's, uh, it's been a long road. I, you know, come down, we'll tell you all about it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So uh, uh, You can guarantee it. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? So we have a motion to close the public hearing, please. Did we do that? We I, I move that the Board of Selectmen close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? It passes 500. Uh, now we're here to deliberate. Uh, any other deliberations uh, from the board? Seeing none, can I have a motion, please? I move that the Board of Selectmen grant the special permit as presented with the addition of prepackaged food available for sale to Modest Roots Brewing for Craft Brewery and Taproom at 3 Industrial Way, Unit 2. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Yep. Passes 500. Congratulations. Ah, thank you all. Thank you, thank you. very much. I might go join the finance committee. The next public hearing, uh, can we have a motion to open the next public meeting, which is for the car wash. Okay. Mm -hmm. I move that the Board of Selectmen open the public hearing and waive the reading of the hearing notice and the legal ad. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Passes 5-0-0. Can I ask people to uh, Shannon, do you want to kick this off and then we'll, uh, we'll invite people? Yeah, the absolutely. Do you guys want to? Yeah, I just want to make sure we're done. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Set up whatever you need. Have a seat in the front here. <coughs> Shannon, you're going to kick this off? Yes. Okay. Okay, so included in your packet tonight is an application for a special permit for a tunnel car wash and vacuum stalls under section. 211 and 21130 of the Tingsboro zoning bylaws. The applicant, Jim Waterman, on behalf of Garnett Reynolds Holdings LLC, is requesting a special permit to operate the car wash at this site. Currently, this location is Flanders Family Trailer Sales. The applicant, represented by Nicosia Associates, is here tonight to explain the application and to answer any questions that the board may have. In reviewing this application, our office requested comments from all relevant departments, and there were no adverse comments. Our office also requested an independent site plan review by Keach Nordstrom Associates, a firm frequently used by the Conservation Commission and Planning Board. Additionally, we advertised this hearing in the Lowell Sun on June 27th and July 4th, and the applicant sent notices to abutters by certified mail. Thank you very much. Um, I'll open the floor up to you if you uh, want to kick this off. All right, great. Uh, so hello, good evening. Thank you for, uh, for letting us present uh, this project to you. 426 Middlesex Road, we hope to become Washville Car Wash. Our attorney counsel, uh, Peter Nicosi, is unable to make it tonight, so I'm going to be presenting uh, on our own behalf. My name is Jim Waterman. I've been a resident here in Kingsborough since 2013. Uh, I'm a career car washer. One thing that I noticed when I moved to town was there was not a great express model car wash locally, and there was nothing that was even close by, and that was what I was used to and where I came from, out of Western New York. Uh, I told my wife in 2013, uh, that Tingsboro needed a great wash and someday I was going to build it. Um, I also decided that if I had my choice to pick a property here in town, I would pick 426 Forest Marine as my ideal location. Uh, ironically, I came to an agreement with Mr. Flanders to, to offer me the property and here I am today asking for approval. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about Washville. So Washville is our brand and my team represents the fastest and most advanced express car wash concept in New England. Express washes are a concept where we provide the fastest, most economical, and environmentally friendly car wash facility. Washville currently operates uh, 11 facilities across New England. Our brand is rapidly expanding, and we're excited to bring uh, our brand to Tingsboro. 
My team here with me tonight consists of Brady Carlucci from Seven Multi-Site Solutions. Uh, he's heading up the engineering efforts, and I also have with me Crystal Robbins, who's my construction and development manager that is in-house here with us at Watchville. <coughs> We're seeking uh, approval from the board tonight to build our location at 426 Middlesex. We previously met with Eric in planning, uh, Mr. Welcome with building, and all the other town departments in an effort to capture any questions and concerns that we have uh, for our initiative. Uh, on June 28th, we did receive approval from the Things Road Conservation and Water Stormwater Committee for our project. A little bit more about Washville. So Washville strives to be good stewards in each community that we develop in. Uh, we take a lot of pride in that. Uh, not only do we deliver an amazing experience to our customers, but we also make a positive impact in each community that we develop in. Um, we, we strive to create jobs uh, and careers for local people. Uh, it's a big initiative for us to hire local, to stay local, to buy local. Uh, we're very much uh, in that mentality. We also have a huge track record of giving back to the community. So at our New York facilities, which we have in Long Island, <coughs> uh, we're one of the biggest contributors to the mothers against drunk driving. Uh, we also have donated over tens of thousands of dollars in efforts to raise money for charities and local families. At our locations up in Maine, we're really proud that we're part of a campaign called the Wish Campaign. The Wish Campaign is uh, each year uh, there's about 50 uh, nominations that are made, and as a uh, donator or a contributor to the charity, uh, whatever's nominated, we would pay for that nomination for the family. So it might be, you know, kind of a make-a-wish situation. Uh, it could be a family in need for new appliances in their home. It, it all gets vetted out through uh, a local media company, and, and we take care of those efforts. So we're really proud of those things. Um, we also support local youth, youth sports teams, and this year we even sponsored a few adult sports teams, which was kind of new and fun for us. Uh, it's really helped get our, our brand recognition uh, in each one of the communities, and it gives us a uh, chance to kind of give us a fun outlet for not only our employees, but our customers as well that want, maybe want to participate in those events. So being a resident here in town, I know plenty of organizations and community events uh, which Washville would love to be part of. So I'm happy to have made this formal introduction to you as our concept and our brand and with my team. Um, and I'm happy to start walking you through questions and answers on our project. Okay, well, thank you for that. I appreciate the uh, description. Uh, yeah. I wish you the most of luck. Uh, first of all, any residents have any questions about the special permit? Can you make a comment? Uh, sure. State your name, address, and then Sorry. make your comment. I'm Margie Dunlap. I'm at 8 Strawberry Hill Lane, and I'm here with a group <coughs> of residents in support of the Washville project. Okay. Um, we think it's a great project for our community for all of the reasons that Jim has said, but we are also here in support of Jim Waterman. Um, he's a great person and a really smart businessman, so I think if he is going forth with this project, we should all support it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Anybody else? Okay, I'll open it up to the board. Uh, questions? Any questions? Dr. Williams, how about you? I have a question. First of all, that was a very nice comment and very <laughs> high praise to you. Uh, I, very quickly, so you had mentioned in passing that your car wash is environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. um, could you explain just very quickly, briefly, how your car wash is more environmentally friendly than others? Just because I think some people might want to hear about that. Absolutely. So we use a bunch of different technologies. So we use what we call variable frequency drives on all of our electric motors. <laughs> It kind of helps our overall power consumption. Car washes are definitely consumers of natural resources, also is such as water and electricity, power, stuff like that. So we try to reduce our carbon footprint as much as possible by using these technologies. Uh, the other thing that we do is we do recycle a, a large amount of our water. So we actually have an in-house water treatment plant that we build into our facility, and that treatment plant will allow us to treat that water and reuse it for multiple vehicles to help save on our water consumption. Um, we also use uh, uh, computer technology to regulate how much usage we have for each car. So uh, to try to put it in as much layman terms as possible, the consumption that I use on maybe a Toyota Prius for versus a large Dodge pickup truck, our computer analyzes the size of that vehicle. We only use the appropriate amount of chemistry, the appropriate amount of water and electricity to wash and dry that vehicle effectively. Um, all of the chemicals that we use are all earth friendly, they're all biodegradable, and all the locations that we've uh, put these in, a couple of them are
considered closed loop situations where we, we don't have an opportunity to, to take our affluent to sewer, uh, all that water is considered very safe uh, at, at those other facilities. So we're really confident in the uh, environment and friendly products that we use on cleaning our vehicles as well. Awesome, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Supplemental witness time. Um, so are, is your facility connected to the water department, like town water, or do you have a well? It will be connected to town water. Um, and they don't foresee that, wa you know, water is always in short supply. Um, they don't foresee, they, they didn't foresee that as an issue. They, they, did not, they did not foresee it as an issue. And to the point of the fact that we do recycle such a large amount, the amount of uh, consumable that we'll use and aff affluent to sewer will be uh, greatly minimized by the technology. And that property was recently connected to sewer, right, with the extension of that line? You it on would the be, sewer? yes, correct, yep. Um, that's all my questions, thank you. Any other questions from the board? The only other question was relative, I, I know that we had um, KNA provide us and there were responses to all of those items. Um, from a traffic standpoint, the turning left in and out, did we, figure that out. Um, I know that that was kind of <coughs> an open item for discussion on the, the turning left, uh, both in and out of the facility. Yeah, so we, we're not promoting a, a left-hand turn. Um, all of our signage uh, is going to be conducive of right in, right out uh, for the property. Um, we did show a left-hand turn only on advisement from fire department. So we, we, we would love to only have a right in, right out. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that, that when we Good met with, with that. Yeah. <laughs> when we met with Chief Howe, he, you know, he basically said, you know, it, it is something that we would like to be enforced, but it's impossible for even his department to enforce that. Uh, so w we would try to encourage it through signage and striping, but there's no guarantees. Um, we we did uh, ask for a cross easement with Mr. Park's uh, property, which was. Uh, something that we're working on getting granted. Um, and one of the things that we did uh, is on the exit of our facility, there's actually no way to access the cross easement. So uh, from exiting vehicles uh, out of our property, there's no way to access that cross easement. Um, that actually greatly reduced the amount of traffic that we expected through the plaza. Uh, and that was something that Mr. Park was had a concern of and I think we've addressed. Um, and. Um, I think it greatly reduces the amount of uh, risk of traffic on Middlesex Road uh, for that left-hand turn. Hopefully it doesn't happen as much, but like I said, it's gonna be hard to enforce. Uh, second one of the ministry, any oh, well, oh. are you done? Bob, I'll, uh, your hand I'll go after you. <coughs> your hand no, I'm done for now. I mean, I think we have expressed a concern about that, th that turn lane, especially with the front, you know, as, as things get more developed and traffic crosses, you can just see sometimes the issues that they have either at Olive Garden coming down um, or some of those other ones, you know, primarily because of the mall traffic. And so I think, you know, as that gets more developed and hopefully if there's something developed behind there, a light would go in at some point because we do not want big, um, you know, semis trying to take up trying to come out there and turn left and, and cause that um, issue. Um, but being said, if a light went in a little further down because it's gonna access the property behind you, that would probably benefit you at some point because people could potentially cut out and go the other way. Um, so while I normally have a concern, I think your traffic is probably not to the extent of the big semi trucks coming in to get washed, right? That you're not, Ca capable of that, you're Correct. probably the bigger yep. SUVs and, and trucks, right? That's the limit that right. you'll be yep. at. Um, so while I still think a left-hand turn out of, the, out of there is bad and, and certainly appreciate that you voluntarily put up signs and can appreciate that you can't police it, I think to the extent that you encourage that um, right only is, is a good thing and, and I would, you know, I think you will be out okay yeah, that I mean, being said you know knock on wood there's an ac accidents there all the time so yeah and i think <laughs> it's a huge improvement from what currently exists which is basically zero curb cut so for us i thought you know creating that that differentiator between the entrance in and entrance out and, and encouraging that right hand turn would be 
just such an improvement from what's currently there. And I think an entrance in and entrance out probably is will you know will benefit you in the long run in that that way as well. So um, I can appreciate that you've added that as a kind of a goodwill effort on the property. <laughs> Any other questions for the board? Just like to add, thank you for our. For, for, for coming in, I appreciate you uh, considering Kingsborough for your car wash. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, it's <laughs> good to have a, a resident opening up a business uh, also. Uh, and I don't have any other questions. I thank you for your presentation. I thought it was a great presentation and uh, a great comment from uh, the resident in the back there uh, about you. And uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully uh, seeing you open. Uh, Matt, did you have something else? Yeah, I, was just gonna say, I know um, you've responded to Keach Nordstrom's comments and we've been trying to get this wrapped up as quick as possible to make the meeting tonight. I don't know if they've had the opportunity to respond to your comments yet. If it came in sometime today within the last few hours or if Shannon, you received them. I didn't them. receive anything. Okay. So you have responded. Um, all right, I just wanted to make sure, you know, we knew where we were with the comments. Um, if the board, you know, is, is in favor, um, we could certainly vote to start drafting an approval with whatever conditions you may want, just subject to receiving our consultant slash feedback, just because we haven't, just for technical purposes, we haven't had the chance for them to respond to the comments, but I don't think it needs to hold up your approval process necessarily. Just procedurally, we should get those comments before it's all fully wrapped up. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. <coughs> it's contingent upon the comments. Uh, any other questions? Uh, can I have a motion to close the public hearing, please? I move to close the public hearing. <coughs> second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? That passes 5 zero, zero. Now deliberation. Uh, any other comments uh, from the board? Mr. Chair? Yes. Just going back to what we were talking about with the left-hand turn, I do think, and I think it's hard with individual um, businesses to try to address that issue. I think that that's something that we should probably have Eric look at with Mass. to We've got this all the time, and the reality is trying to make it incumbent upon businesses to come up with something is very difficult. And if we want to be business friendly, I think we're going to have to initiate a way to better address that, whether that's adding a middle lane that's left turn only, or whatever it is. But I, th I think that we should look at having Eric come up with a way to, to deal with that corridor and make it more business friendly, given that we've got multiple uh, projects that are coming in there and uh, it's it's really hard when these come to us to sit there and say yeah I know it's it's hard with that left turn it can be dangerous but to have the businesses try to come up with a way to address that I think we need to be a little bit more proactive and, and come up with a way to to deal with that okay. Any other questions? Second, any other? just in response uh, I think of, as a part of the special permit for Olive Garden it was it's in there that you're, they're not allowed to take, I mean, but again, who can it, you know, mm, short of putting a, and that's why there's a sign at the bottom there, but short of putting a police officer and ticketing everybody there, um, it, it's really hard to, ma to maintain, and we've seen some pretty bad accidents there, so I think it, it is warranted. I think the issue becomes where it's, you know, two lanes on both sides, that's what, you know, whereas further, Towards the center of town, it's one lane on, on each side, so it's not as as hard um, for people, to, you know, pull in and out. Um, and depending on again their curb cut, it sounds like your entrance and exit are going to encourage that. So your your curbing is is going to lend people to not want to turn left and drive over your curbing, right? I mean, I, that's my that's my understanding of what you're doing to try to promote that. But short of putting a cop there, there's nothing we could do. But how we do that, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it's a, it's a challenge. But maybe it's, it's working with them to figure out strategic lights along there that at least keep. When people are going to be coming out of some of those businesses, we've slowed down the traffic that's going to be coming in the opposite direction, so that it's not likely someone's coming at potentially that greater speed that they can't stop. Yeah, you know, it's the same thing, I think, right. we, on we the other have, side. We, we can definitely take an action to look at that longer term, what we're gonna do. Um, I think for this particular uh, permit, I think we're all set. Any other questions? Can I have a motion then? 
I move that the Board of Selectmen grant the special permit contingent upon comments from Keith Nordstrom and Associates uh, to Garnet Reynolds Holding LLC to operate a tunnel car wash with vacuum stalls at 426 Middlesex Road. Second. The motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. That passes 500. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Another place I probably saw. Next public hearing. We have many of them. <coughs> That's a lot of good support you have. Yeah. Well, then get your odds in. Right? <laughs> Can I have a motion on the next to open the next public hearing? I move that the Board of Selectmen open the public hearing and waive the reading of the hearing notice and the legal end. Uh, second. And this is for uh, Sun City Liquors. Sun City Liquors. At 17 Parham Road. Yes. Be quiet. Call back. Maybe you just call the doors closed, right? Should we close it? Or should we are we open door meeting? Um, uh, the doors are unlocked, so that's okay. Good. Okay. So I believe I have a motion and a second to open the hearing for uh, Sun City Liquors proposed at 17 Parham Road. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. That passes 500. Okay. Um, Shannon, you want to kick this off? Yes. Included in your packet tonight is an amendment application for the change in location of Anjali Inc., which is Sun City Liquors, presently located at 240 Lakeview Avenue, with the proposed location changed to 17 Parham Road. The applicant, Mina Patel, is here tonight to explain the application and to answer any questions that the board may have. In reviewing this application, our office requested comments from all relevant departments and there were no adverse comments. Additionally, we advertised this hearing in the Lowell Sun on June 27th and July 4th and the applicant sent notices to abutters by certified mail. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, and could you introduce yourselves and then I'll uh, let you uh, take it away. Mina Patel, the owner of Sun City. Uh, my name is Amar Patel. Uh, I wanted to accompany my mother here. Get the microphone a little bit closer to you. Do, is there anything else you'd like to add about this? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say uh, thank you very much for all your help and support. Um, you made this process easier, and we haven't done this um, application process for a while. So just shifting over all the people of uh, Tingsboro, and um, we're very excited and happy to hopefully provide what they want and. Uh, Increase products that they could keep requesting, and um, yeah, hopefully we we can do well. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to ask any residents if they have any comments they'd like to make about this uh, special permit. Seeing none, uh, I'll open up the board for questions. Uh, Selectman Montalbocas, you want to kick it off? I don't have any particular questions. Um, Maybe you want to give a little pitch. So are you moving because it's bigger? Yes. Yeah, so um, you're expanding. Congratulations. We're expanding. We've been in uh, Tingsboro um, for years. Um, um, and over these years, uh, the variety of products that have increased, um, well, as you guys know now, it's like craft beers, IPAs, just like a little bit of what we heard earlier. Absolutely. And um, so uh, the guests and customers, they, they would like us to increase brands and varieties, but right now we just storage wise, it's not capable, but this opportunity came up and uh, we're more, we're more than happy to take it and hopefully provide and we would hate to see um, the people of Tingsboro, our customers and uh, have to go somewhere else or, you know, to a different town as opposed to hopefully being here, that would be, you know, hopefully we're providing them good service and like we can keep them happy. Well, congratulations and I wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, Selectman Eldridge? No questions. Selectman Ryan? I know, I'm, I'm good. Selectman Winterstrom. Um, so this isn't a special permit, but rather just a change of address, is that correct? This is, I've heard it's it referenced as well. It's the same zoning. It's just, same zoning. It, it's just a really a formality, you're, cha you're moving locations. Yes. And so you've got to file with us to, uh, for your permit, okay. Just so I understand, since we've 
had special permits here tonight, yeah. and that we've had that referenced in related to you. But um, I wish you the best of luck in your new location. Um, hopefully, it, it gives you the space and everything you need to be continue to be successful here in Chainsboro. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for you. everything all these years. It's been a pleasure uh, serving Chainsboro. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Then I have a motion to close the public hearing, please. I move to close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Any other questions uh, during deliberations? Uh, seeing none, can I have a motion then? I move that the Board of <coughs> Selectmen approve the Liquor License Amendment application for Anjali Inc. DBA Sun City Liquors to change the location from 240 Lakeview Avenue to 17 Parham Road. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. That passes 5 0 0. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Good, you. Good luck. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. <coughs> we have one last public hearing. Can I have a motion to open the public hearing, please? I move that the Board of Selectmen open the public hearing and waive the reading of the hearing notice and the legal ad. Can I have a second? Please? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, that passes 5-0-0. Oh. Uh, would you like to get off, Janet? First? Yes, <laughs> last one. Um, included in your packet tonight is an entertainment license application for the Beehive, a co-working community at Two Bridgeview Circle, <coughs> number eight, to show outdoor movies on an inflatable screen on Fridays from 7 p.m. through 10 p.m. on Fridays through October 1st, 2022, and this will all be free of charge to those that attend. The applicant, Chris McCarran, is looking to promote the co-working space that she's opening at this location and is here tonight to explain the application and to answer any questions that the board may have. In reviewing this application, our office requested comments from all relevant departments and there were no adverse comments. We advertised this hearing in the Lola Sun on June 27th and July 4th, 2022, and the applicant sent <coughs> notices to abutters by certified mail. Thank you. That was very excited to hear this. That's such a great idea, but I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to you to kick it off. Thank you. Any comments you'd like to add? Well, just that there are still some things that are, you know, in the works a little bit. The only thing that I haven't actually purchased yet is a projector, but I expect that I'm going to, rather than rent this stuff, I'm going to actually purchase it so it could be available to other community people if they wanted to do a similar, you know, type of thing. Um, I also just brought pictures of the space in case you had questions about that. This kind of shows um, the building itself is right he located right here, and it, it is basically right on Middlesex Road, so there aren't a ton of residents uh, except this. The condos are here, not too, too close, but this, where am I? This, <laughs> <laughs> this one house is, is pretty close, but other than that, I don't think you know, that we would really bother anybody. And I also spoke to a couple of, and, and then this is a, like a close up of, the plan would be basically to have people park on the sides and the front, and then have them just on lawn chairs and stuff in the back. So the, I don't think the noise would really be too much of an issue as far as, and obviously it's not like a midnight thing or anything either, so. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll open up the board for questions. So it, first of all, I think it's a great idea, and you created um, a lot of conversation in my house over the weekend because we were trying to figure out where you were and what you were doing. <laughs> um, so when I read it and saw your Facebook posts on, on some of the stuff, we immediately were Googling. Um, I'm happy to say we found you. We found out a lot of information about where you were and, um, and what you're doing on the site, in that space. So. Um, You've already generated a lot of talk, and hopefully that <laughs> translates to people coming to the, the movies. Um, <laughs> a couple of questions on, I guess, how are you projecting the, the sound out of it? Are you setting up speakers, or are you doing something that, you know, where I'm assuming you'll need it loud enough for people to hear it, but obviously we are sensitive to the neighbors, like, not too sure. loud that, you know, sound travels and... Exactly, yeah. I. I um, called a bunch of people who do this type of thing, and basically I purchased this, what's called, 
I have a little picture of it. It's called the JBL Extreme 2. It's just like a one foot, basically, a Bluetooth speaker, but I'm actually gonna plug it into the, the um, Blu-ray player so that it'll, the sound won't get out of sync, which I understand can happen with the Bluetooth speakers. And basically, I'm gonna put it wherever the physical uh, projector piece is, so it'll probably be maybe 10 feet into the crowd. So I don't think it's gonna have to really be that loud because people are kinda gonna be clustered around it, but there is just gonna be the one speaker. And I'm told that that's gonna be sufficient. Great, um, and then in terms of, like, do you have to purchase licenses for the movies that you're gonna be showing? Um, and, and again, not that you would show something inappropriate, but how, you know, how do we ensure that something that's not quite a appropriate for public consumption doesn't end up on the screen? I guess, so as far, in answer to your first question, you do, there are some movies that are in the public domain, like a lot of Charlie Chaplin flicks and stuff like that, so that might be our first like film, and while I get the whole other side worked out, because you know, it is quite costly to, um, to, to get these licenses, I understand it's between 350 and $500 per movie, so, but then there's another, there's like a loophole that if it's friends and family, but I haven't <laughs> verified that yet either. So I, like I said, I think the first movies are probably gonna be something that's just in the public domain, some kind of oldie type thing. Um, as far as if that it's appropriate, I think, um, you know, it would have to just be trust. <laughs> you know, like you, you obviously, I wouldn't wanna put something on there that the community wouldn't want. That wouldn't help anyone and it, I wouldn't put anything on there that would make me or my business look bad, so, but I don't know how you can guarantee that, except I guess you could write it in, you know, like a, a rating type of thing, you know, you could say it has to be rated a certain, um, you know, X-rated film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and I guess, you know, that's my, my question, obviously, is just to, to protect, you know, what might be, and I don't know if, if there's, you know, as you're advertising them, you disclose what the, you know, movie film or whatever is rating so that people are well aware yeah. coming into it what, you know, I guess the movie rating is. And so I would be comfortable as long, you know, that as long as you were disclosing what the movie rating was yeah. and people can decide for themselves if that's an appropriate film for, for their family or viewing. And, um, Again, just to kind of protect you and, and us from something outrageous showing up on there <laughs> or people outraged that, that, that some, you know, yeah. words were said or anything. You know, people yeah. get very sensitive about that, and, and I can appreciate that with little kids and oh, absolutely. in the public space. No, that's space. an excellent idea. Um, yeah. So those were my only two comments. I think it's a great idea, and um, I look forward to getting the opportunity to visit your space. Like I said, I had no <laughs> idea you were there, but I do now have a sense of what's <laughs> what goes on there as, as does my family, so. Well, and at the moment, nothing goes on there except <laughs> construction, because I'm just, it, it's, the, the space technically could have been moved into right away, but it has a real 1980s kind of vibe to it, so that doesn't really s sync with my personal taste. Um, nothing against the 80s, obviously I lived through them and they were great, <laughs> but you know, I want to let go of those. So I'm pr tearing out the carpeting and you know, just freshening it up, I want to have a, right now the kitchen basically consists of, it's like some kind of a little unit that just has a little bar sink and a little fake two burner stove and I want to make that larger because one of the things that we hope to do is once it's open to, is for the first year to make it available for free after hours for the community. So if you had a birthday party or something like that, you know, you could use the, there's like one big room when you come in and that way we'll have a, a kitchen that could accommodate catering and stuff like that. So I guess, I would, Mr. Chair, if I could just ask one more question. What is your vision for that space in terms of, you know, it, it sounds like you're promoting it as, you know, startup businesses and things can come in and use that as like, you know, or conference space or other things for businesses that don't have that. So is that gonna be your niche market or are you trying to get, you know, like the spa some of the spaces in Lowell, people that need creative space, um, like artists or different things like that? Like yeah, I would maker love space. So they, there's um, several different types of people. So you could just come in, let's say that you work from home but you're meeting a client and you don't really want them in your kitchen. So you say, oh Chris, I wanna just rent a couple hours in the conference room and that's great. All the way up to 
um, a company perhaps, like a, a large company that happens to have four or five employees working in that, in this area, who says, okay, we want to rent an office from you. All of our employees are going to work in this one office with, you know, the desk and stuff, and they don't have to have insurance and Wi-Fi and printers and all that other stuff. They just have their employees show up and it's all done for them, basically. Um, so yeah, and, and anywhere in that kind of continuum. It's not going to be ever like a function hall type of thing, but I do, you know, the space is there and it's a big open room, so if people want to do things after hours, I just want to make it available. Because, I mean, the, the, the verbiage is intentional, this co-working community. I really want it to be like a community, like a giant BNI where everybody, you know, you're an attorney and you do business with this accountant and you do business with this, you know, real estate agent and, and everybody who's there. It's not just going to be entrepreneurs, but you know, people who just don't really want to work from home anymore, you know, that at least one day a week want to be with humans. And, <laughs> you know, a, a lot of the ones that I visited, there's this whole, um, which un is understandable that you just, you go in and you're quiet and you just, you know, work really quietly at your little space. And I, I you know, that of course you don't want people to be really boisterous and, you know, walking up and down the hall with their cell phone. But, for example, the kitchen has doors. So if you want to eat with other people and, you know, have a little time to chat, you know, and I want to put like some picnic tables outside or something like that, just to kind of promote that feeling of, you know, people, like, I want it to be all the great things about working in an office, ex but you don't, and you know, without the boss <laughs> kind of thing. Because there are great things about working, you know, in, in an office and getting to meet people and stuff like that. So that's sort of my broader vision for the space. <laughs> great, thank you. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Letting me do a little. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, so, relative to the, the movie showing, um, you've got the speaker, um, and, and there are some abutters that are somewhat close. Mm -hmm. What What is the plan for making sure that it's not too loud for them? Uh, do they get a free invite with a spot right up front? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, it's free to everybody, but yeah, and they all have, well, actually, they don't all have my contact info, but I'll put that on some flyers and make that available so that if for example, they're feeling like they're sitting home and they're like, I can't hear my own television. I don't want to hear, you know, the Charlie Chaplin music or whatever. Then they can text me because, and that's what I, when I spoke to some of the other companies that do this, they're like, well, you know, what do you do to make sure that the, comp that the community is happy? They say, well, if they complain, we turn it down. <laughs> and I guess that would be my plan as well, you know. I mean, I, I think it'll be obvious to me, you know, I mean, if, that it's too loud. But if not, if people, you know, wanted, wanted to... Uh, request it then as long as everybody can still hear it we can turn it down that's and then the the other question is relative to uh bathroom facilities so the plan if you are all okay with this is that people would have to come into the beehive to, to use the bathroom but that's upstairs so i don't know if that's okay um you know we could certainly rent like a handicap thing but i obviously i'm trying to keep the cost sure. as low as possible so yeah i don't know are there any ada issues relative to this is there an elevator well uh, not at the moment that's okay. definitely on the budget because okay. you know i've had to bring a lot of stuff upstairs and i didn't enjoy it very much so okay. <laughs> curious, curious. but okay. it certainly wouldn't be installed in time for this right. we can double check with paul the bathroom situation i think as long as the bathroom is available at the business that's essentially hosting the function um i think that's fine but we can certainly double check with him make sure appropriate facilities are available. Yeah, and then um, Paul would be the one relative to noise, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, that would be the other question for him would be, okay, is there a way for us to, to make sure that, um, you know, <coughs> sound, <laughs> our, by our bylaws relative to sound, <laughs> that those are being met, because um, that's under his purview, correct? Yeah. I'm in the Board of Health. Yeah. <laughs> board of Health. <laughs> well, what are the quiet hours as far as the ordinances and stuff go? Isn't it, isn't it 10 p.m. or something? I, th I thought it was 10, but that's not my area of expertise. Typically, um, up till 10 p.m. is considered like the public time. Outside noise. Oh, 10, for yeah. noise purposes. <laughs> I, have a question. I have a question. Go ahead, Louise. I'll make it quick. <laughs> so I'm just trying to envision like what the space is going to be. So we, in my mind, we have kind of like a WeWorks type situation on the inside, and then we have this 
open to the public movie night on the outside. Uh, is this going to be a place, some, I'm trying to think of all the different ways that it can be used, maybe like, you know, we always have conversations about the, you know, the park and rec building is kind of a bit of a mess right now, like the gardening club needs places to meet, things like that. Is that that type of thing where like local clubs and communities can either rent out rooms for their, yeah. is that kind of what we're going for? Is like, is it more just like groups or, I'm trying to figure out how the inside is jiving with the movie outside or here. Um, I'm not sure that it necessarily is, you know, yeah, I just like okay. outside movies. You know, I like the whole summertime, everybody sitting outside, you know, thing. But it doesn't really relate per se. But as far as your question, and I actually forgot to talk about the artist thing for you as well. Um, I want to have a little, um, there's a thing called hot seats, what they call hot seats. So, y you know, let's say that you just wanted to come every so often. So you'd get a punch card that has 10 visits, for example. And then when you just come and you don't get a dedicated desk, it's just a, a a seat at a bar like what you see at a WeWork type of situation. So, you, you know, you come in, you do your work, you do, you, and then, you know, the next time you come, you might be in a whole different room. So there are three rooms that are dedicated to that type of a scenario where you just come in, there's a big, you know, a couple big bars with different kind of desks, and you just sit and do your work. And then the next level would be like a dedicated desk. So you'll still be in an office with other people that are doing other things, but it's your desk, you can leave your stuff there, you know, whatever. But then in addition to that, there are conference rooms and one big uh, training room. So if the garden club wanted to come, and, and that would be presumably an after hours event. So the first year it would be free for them. After that it would be $25, you know, or whatever. I don't know what it's going to be, but it won't be much. <laughs> and, but if they needed to have it during the day, we could, I mean, I think they'd need to, they would want to reserve it. So then I'd have to charge them something. Um, those so it's quite inexpensive. It's like ten dollars an hour or whatever. So yeah, yeah it's not a big to deal. Figure but out the general flow and what it was going to be used for. So yeah. uh, thank you, I appreciate that. Come for a tour. <laughs> we absolutely will. <laughs> you just have to forgive the p carpeting that hasn't been taken up yet. No, please, no worries. <laughs> Well, I'm just a resident. I live in the back. Okay. I'm not against it. I'm just genuinely curious how it's going to work. I don't know if anyone's even been down there before. I'm assuming no one here has. Um, it's like a really, the front businesses are pretty small, um, and it's a one-way. So you come down, and if you don't turn into either of the two businesses, it's you go down, and it's a circle, and it's a one-way. Um, and when I say it's a circle, like yeah, when you you're turning, you can't. You can't see beyond the circle. Um, everyone in my fear is, I, I love it. It's so quiet there. I see deer in the backyard. I see animals all the time. So it's like very, very, very quiet back there. Um, so because it's a one way, sometimes like Amazon trucks and stuff will come and they won't know and they'll come back up the other way and it is really, oh. really dangerous. Yeah. Um, so I guess, how are you going to prevent people from going continuously going down? Because everyone who goes down there, I know. Like, that's that person, that's that person. <laughs> um, so if you continue to go straight, it's the circle. Um, and I guess oh, good. Yeah. that's kind of my, I'm not against it. I just honestly don't know how it's going to work. It's very, very, very quiet down there. Um, like, again, I see animals even on the other sides of the businesses. Um, I walk my dog there all the time. It's nice and quiet. Um, and same with parking. So down further, we had a paving project um, a couple months ago, and we actually weren't allowed to park in the businesses. We had to park in Innovation and then walk to our house because the businesses didn't allow us to park there. So I'm just curious, like, how everyone is also going to park. So this building, we... The way this works, this building, this is, first I want to talk to the fact that they didn't let you park there because the people who used to own the unit that I now have kind of controlled the whole association. They, they never really turned it over to the other condo owners. And they, if were asked, perhaps they didn't want people to park there. But now we're a real association and we're meeting and everybody's really nice and they're really motivated to 
take care of the building and fix the parking lot and do all that kind of stuff. And I would be shocked if they wouldn't let people park there if there was some kind of a thing going on that you couldn't park in your own space. Um, but it's an excellent point that you bring up about people going down there and it's going to frustrate them as well, right? And it's going to mm -hmm. frustrate you. Yeah. So I think we should have a big sign that says, park here for the movie. <laughs> yeah. Because we don't want anybody parking down there. But if there's like also like overflow parking, like if I just don't want people to migrate. And I love the idea. I do. I love the idea just there in that area. Yeah. No, there's really limited little parking bit. there. We, we don't want you to... Yeah, a, yeah, and then not. which is, I'm sorry, is it the left or right building? If from on this picture, it's the left-hand building. <laughs> so it's the one where the cursor is? Yes, exactly. So you can't really tell, but you literally can, in the parking lot, you literally can see the person's balcony through the woods. Like, it's that, it's pretty close. And I know you sent out a letter, so if someone was against it, they could have showed up, but like, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to understand how it's all going to work, that's all. For sure, if we do the first one and everybody's yeah. like, you know what, we can't even hear ourselves think, this is ridiculous, you know, then, I mean, yep. the, I mean, I'm hoping that people where you live will want to come work here, so the last yeah. thing I want to do is make everybody angry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I think, um, yeah, I mean, if you're comfortable with it, and if, if everybody else feels okay about it, then you know we could give it a try the first evening and just kind of see how it goes. Or I could even do sort of a, which we'll probably do anyway, is like a test run of the equipment and make sure that everything works and just see how, how loud it's gonna be. Because I don't, I mean, I've asked and Googled and done all kinds of things to try to figure out things like decibel levels and all that kind of stuff. Not that it means 100% <laughs> to me, but you know, just to understand what to expect and there is no answer. You know, like I said, I called these professionals. They're like, oh, if they're unhappy, we'll turn it down. I'm like, thank you, not helpful. <laughs> so, I mean, if we can just kind of play it by ear the first time, and if it, if it does end up being like, wow, this is echoing all over the buildings and it's horrible in the community, then, you know, it's just, I mean, we, I, I don't think we can bring it inside because it's a big 20-foot screen. <laughs> but we could certainly, you know, just abandon the idea. It's not, you know. Not the end of the world. Is it going to be like out front to the street or in the back? Well, I was no. going to have it in the back because mm -hmm. of the car of, of road noise. Yep. But again, we could move it to yep. the front if if that could be an option if the if yep. people are like mm, no. <laughs> and I actually want to look at there's I think there is a little more parking in the back so um, I haven't been here that much at night yeah. so I don't know how busy it is if the car noise would be a problem because that's certainly a solution I think mm -hmm. too to move it to the front. But. Thank you. Mr. Chair, can I yes. ask another question? Yes. So, if, because it looks like we're we're looking for an entertainment license for all the way through October. Well, that, and that's just. Yeah, you know, and that's fine. What I'm wondering out. is if we were to um, have a much shorter duration where we could do one or two of these, mm -hmm. see whether there are issues, because we don't know what capacity is. We don't know what the sound levels are going to be. We don't know what any of those things are. Um, potentially give you an opportunity to do a dry run on, on one of those things to, yep. to determine those, but then, you know, I, I don't know what we, whether we would issue the permit just for a short period of time and have her come back, or whether we would issue it for the longer period of time, uh, contingent upon no issues relative to that. Um, which way is the easiest way to do that? And first, would you be amenable to that? Sure. You know, yeah, I mean, I'm not married to the idea of giving up all my Friday nights either. You know, I mean, I, I just thought, you know, I had to do certain pr parameters for the thing. I originally wanted to do Thursday night, but then, you know, they're having stuff at um, Mommy Cruises. I mean, Mommy, thank you. <laughs> On Thursday night, and I didn't want to interfere with them. So, you know, I just want to be a good neighbor and have fun and stuff. But, um, yeah, absolutely. I'm so, Matt, what are our options? Or, Colin, do you have? So, as a license issued by this board, you could issue it till October 1st, and if neighbors complain after the first one, this board could rescind the license, it could modify the restrictions. If you issue just one for two, the applicant would then have to do a new public hearing, we'd have to pay the Lowell Sun to re-advertise. The easiest, without the board giving up any authority, would be to grant it for the entire duration, and if abutters do have concerns and they either 
They called the police because of excessive noise. This board could at any time ask the applicant to come back and either rescind the license or add new, new modifications. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Williams, did you have a question? Any other questions? Dr. Williams? I yeah. mean, more of a comment. I mean, by, I think by limiting the hours, we've, we've kind of set the parameter in terms of, of the noise because anybody can have any kind of noise outside up until a certain period of time. So, mm -hmm. you know, by, say, by setting the hours, you know, if you're comfortable 7 to 10 because you, you might end up with a three-hour movie, that, you know, that well, that's kind more of, but like I mean, darkness. You know what I mean? We'll make right. it earlier when it's dark enough. Um, so that's the only know, reason so we I wanted to go till 10. You know, I think reasonably you're going to be a good neighbor and try to not upset the people behind you. But technically, if there was loud noises outside anywhere at that point, nobody can really kind of limit or control it until that 10 p.m. hour. And then they can call the cops on the excessive noise, right? Like that's the way it is for all of our license holder businesses who get entertainment licenses for outdoors. So I, I, I think we're putting in some safeguards for the neighborhood. I, I guess I am concerned, you know, I honestly never been back there to know we wouldn't want the traffic flow to, you know, cut through there, but you can't control it. A lot of people cut sometimes cut through different streets in town and hopefully again you're gonna do your best to um, put people into the right spot so that that doesn't just well, I don't know what the turnout would be but I'm hoping that some people could also you know walk ride their bike you know people who certainly the people here aren't gonna drive over you know so I'm hoping that there will be people who don't need to park um, I don't know but I, this is a, just a giant unknown for me <laughs> at the moment so I apologize um. I mean, I, I guess I would just say I applaud your effort, and I think it's a great way, and, you know, trial and error will correct, you know, any things that, that happen, I think, in the first few stumbles. But I, I would be, you know, comfortable issuing it, knowing that, you know, you're pretty easy to work with, <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're being pretty honest and coming in, and then just asking that you disclose the ratings of the movies. and. Mm -hmm be open to feedback from the neighbors, which it sounds like you are. Definitely, definitely. Any other questions? Um, well, thank you for, for coming in. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it, and I think it was a fantastic idea. I wish uh, more residents would come up with these ideas thank uh, you. to get the community together uh, even more than they, we do now. So uh, I applaud you uh, for that thank also. You. Um, with that, uh, we close the public hearing, or close the public hearing. I move that the Board of Selectmen close the public hearing. Second. <coughs> I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That passes 5 zero, zero. Uh, Any other comments before we? Just I want to point of clarification sure. on the noise ordinance. I, I just pulled up our zoning bylaws, and there is um, maximum decibels of 50. Okay at the lot line of an adjacent or nearby residence or institutional use weekdays during the hours of 6 p.m. to 7 a.m. Okay. So th it, it, it. I think 50 decibels is pretty loud. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, but there is, we have <laughs> talked about 10 o'clock and I just want to make sure that um, one, that it's, it's reasonable and two, that there are provisions for the abutters. If it is very loud, certainly we want to make sure that um, it, it is a situation where if there is a complaint, it's valid, you know, whether it's too many people and, and um, you know, we have parking issues or it's just too darn loud, whatever it is, it, I think whatever we put in there, let's make sure that we put it as a stipulation in here if we can and let's not assume on the, on the bylaws um, just because there are some things in here. And this is one of the reasons why we're rewriting them because they're hard to find. <laughs> okay, any other comments? Uh, any other suggestions how we incorporate that, or is that just? It's always safest to, you know, add that additional clarifying language into the motion. So, if, you know, if there are concerns potentially about parking and or noise complaints in the future, I'd recommend, you know, approving the motion for the special permit, um, you know, contingent upon the board um, retaining its ability to modify the conditions of the permit if there are um, you know, bona fide complaints received 
whether it be for traffic, noise, um, you know, any other issues on the site that may violate the town's bylaws or ordinances, and particularly the noise ordinance. You could say so moved if you'd like, so we can review the recording. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> Second. <laughs> well, one, o one other question that, you know, just kind of thought of is, you don't necessarily plan on doing this every Friday night, right? You're gonna run out of free movies right. to be able to show before you have to start buying them. So right, I just said, I had to put some dates in, right. in there, so I just said, let's do 10 weeks, right? Between now and did. October, it's 10 weeks, yeah. so. And I won't be ready to start this Friday, so. <laughs> be, it won't be every Friday night, right. and it, you know, chances are it could be five out of the 10, or yeah, four out of the 10, right? I mean, that's your goal. Right. Any other questions? Do I have a motion and a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Passes five zero zero. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Look forward to it. Me too. <laughs> and I would just encourage the residents, if there are issues, to, to make it known. Since obviously, we want to make sure it's a appropriate use of the space and sensitive to the neighbors. So if there's a problem, call the office. Okay, so uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna move on to new business. Uh, on new business, we have finalized the Board of Selectmen Town Administrator <coughs> fiscal year 2023 goals. <coughs> Mr. Town Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think this is the first time new business has ever been number 11 to start, so it's <laughs> interesting. Um, based on the feedback at the last meeting, we reworded a few of the goals to make it a little clear that some of these items are things that we plan on working on and would like to accomplish. Uh, at the last meeting, you'll remember a few of the goals said we want to do X, but it may involve other boards, other departments, employees, things outside of our control. So we just wordsmith some of the goals to make sure that it was clear that these are priorities for the town um, and we hope to make progress on them, but um, some of them um, to achieve the goal um, may be either reliant on outside you know, individuals or sources and um, you know, achieving the goal may be uh, a little different for each of them. So would you like me to reread all of them? I mean, you've had an opportunity I, to review them. I think them. we've gone over them already. Yeah, uh, they haven't changed in, significantly. In the packets, um, I think I'll just open it up to the board if they have any questions. I mean, clearly uh, we did this last year. Uh, these are goals that we're, we're looking to achieve. Um, you know, uh, we can add uh, we can add more goals uh, at any time uh, anybody can ask to put anything on the agenda uh, at any time uh, this is just giving us a starting point of what our goals are for this year uh, so having said that I'll open it up for any questions mr. chair yes um, I didn't see anything on here that you know oh gee I don't know if we should be doing this or this isn't very important I thought there's some really good things that are on here um, I liked how you, you tweaked some of the language to make it a little bit clearer on some of the items. Um, I, you know, I think like it is last year when we had 18 of them, there's a concern because there's 16 of them, but we did get through almost all of them last year. So, you know, I, I, I like stretch in some of the goals. Um, the only other thing that we'd want to do relative to how we use these um, I think Selectman Wennerstrom mentioned this the last time, is making sure that if we're going to measure the town um, administration and management, that we have specific and measurable items that are on here. A bunch of these are outside of your, your control. Um, so I don't know if we need to call that out, or we just say these are our goals, and then perhaps draft something different w relative to how we're going to measure uh, the town manager in, in his office. Well, if it's, if it's obvious it's out of his control, um, that's one thing. Um, but I think most of this, uh, most of these are, you know, either Matt, Colin, 
Shannon or somebody else in, uh, you know, in, in the group is going to be assigned these uh, to, to do these to do these goals. So um, I don't really think we need to do that. I think these are, are you know, it becomes very obvious as something beyond the, the control of, of MAP, and we're, we're going to know that as we go forward. I, I'm not really sure which one in particular here you're, you're thinking of, but. Uh, I think these are good goals uh, that we can move forward with and, and, and adjust accordingly a, as we go forward. Um, like you said, if there's something that's beyond our, con beyond our control, we can, we can take it off in the future. Uh, this is kind of a working document, the way I look at it. Mr. Chair? Yes. I mean, like I, I appreciate Suckman Eldridge's comments, and I think like you look at 13 and 14 specifically, support the creation of a Jamesboro Land Trust or support the establishment of well the day before the you know quote unquote review you could write something on a paper and say I supported that did that really accomplish the goal so I think on some of those very broad ones we we do need some measurable items you know support the creation of a Tingsboro land trust what is that what is what is if the goal is to to have at some point within this time frame the creation of the land trust that it needs to be a little more specific than that because just to say I support it you could say you support it here now and check that off as a goal because that's all it says support it I support the land trust so I think again you know having done employee reviews and goals and stuff with people for the past 20 years we, you know, I've learned that you, uh, in a lot of places, you have to be very specific about what your measurements are going to be, so that there's a clear understanding from both sides. So that again, somebody new, you know, is elected, they can step in and see here's how we were supposed to measure these. I mean, it's, and having done this, you know, with the school superintendent for nine years, I mean, it's the same thing. Some of the, some things are out of his control. But we had very specific measurable goals to see if there was progress made towards the completion. It might not be completed. We might not expect all these to be completed, but we want to see measurable steps towards their completion. So I think either we have to be a little more specific or we have to then turn this into a matrix of how we're going to judge how the work gets done and the review happens when we go to compare these goals at some end point in time. Councilwoman Carol Broker. Um, I think that for a lot of them it says work with X, which implies to me that obviously it's not directly in your purview. You have to work with people to do it. Um, I understand the concerns about specificity 100%. I think we are reading it a little bit differently. When I read support the creation of the Tingsboro Land Trust, um, I don't read like we all have to say, yes, we agree, we support the Tingsboro Land Trust. I think maybe we can change that to have the same work with, because the end process really is, it's not us, the board, that's creating the land trust. We're just helping other departments do that. Um, and I do also think that like the, the goals are just for us the selectmen, right? What do we want to accomplish? It's not really supposed to be measurable for like other, is that what you were? Well, it's, I mean, the, the title is that they're the goals of the Board of, Select, Board of Selectmen and Town Administration. And obviously when it comes time to review, that's in the past what we've held the town administrator accountable for. So if we're going to hold him accountable for these things, I think some of them need a little bit more specificity or need some type we need to in conjunction some type of matrix so that again it holds I mean I would person say, account accountable I would say that my expectation is not that if the administration does not get all of these goals that there is some kind of penalty that is not my expectation my expectation is these are the goals that we hope to accomplish as long as we're all working on it as a team and it gets along some road, right, then, then it should be a job well done. I, I just want to say that my expectation is not that this is your to-do list and if you don't get it done, 
that's bad, right? We, we all have to work on it as a team towards hitting this goal, but sometimes we hit our goals, sometimes we don't, right? Do we want to hit all of them? Yes. Do we want to try our best to hit all of them? Yes. If there's some reason that we're not hitting them, we need to review it, but like uh, Slickman Eldridge said earlier, we had a ton of goals on there last year. I honestly did not believe we were gonna hit as many as we did, and I'm really proud of the whole team for hitting as many as we did, so. I guess from my point of view, I am fine with the work with language. I see both of your points about the specificity for the support the. Maybe we can change that to work with so that it doesn't sound like our only goal is to just say, yes, we agree with this. But otherwise, I, I think, I mean, it, it, we, if we go into the minutia of all of this, I think we're gonna get lost. If I could just respond, I don't think it's, it's you know, I don't look at it as penalized. I think it's more, again, to hold the you know person uh, you know hold the group of us collectively in the town administration as the employees you know to set them on a path for success and to help them understand what our objectives are in those goals so that they can be met and it's not you know it it becomes clear what they are and it's to set someone up on a path for success rather than a punitive measure it, it's to advance everything along. So that, you know, I guess that's the way I see it. And again, if you're gonna hold somebody accountable for reaching a goal, and it, not in a punitive way, but hold them accountable to be able to say it was done or not, there has to be some level of measurement and understanding of what we're all working towards. I'll, I'll just say, you know, last year, you know, I'll reiterate again, <coughs> I think we hit 15 out of the 18 goals last year. Uh, and it was very clear in the description uh, when we didn't attain it, you know, the reason why. So I, I think it was very measurable. Um, and I think what it really helped to do is, is at a starting point, which is where we're at now, is, is, is to lay these all out so we can make progress throughout the year to, to hit all these goals. And I think the reason we hit 15 out of 18 last year is we started a year early, right? We started like right, you know, now we're starting now and we're gonna go till, till, till June. June, right? So, you know, that was, that's the idea of, of setting this up. Now, last year, I think we did say, you know, support a couple of groups. Um, and then we did support, uh, you know, the, uh, the Public Safety Building Committee. Uh, we did support them, they made some, some progress but we hit a, you know, we hit a, we hit an end point where we didn't, we weren't able to finalize it. So, we got to a point where we were able to support them, uh, but in the end, we couldn't say we finalized it because they didn't finalize the report. And in the goal, it had finalized the report, right? So, um, so I, I think it is important to try to keep defining these as much as we can. Uh, if we hit a roadblock, we discuss it, right? You know, is this something that we can have them accountable for, or is this? a particular group hit a landmine because of a legal issue or something else or something else. Um, I mean, we, we can tweak these a little bit, but if we keep getting into the minutia, um, I think we're gonna kind of get lost. Um, but if there's any in particular we wanna change, I mean, Matt just changed a couple, one or two of them up there, um, and we, we, can, we can change them. But let, let's do it tonight, and let's kind of move forward. I would hope we would move forward. Can, can I make, a I was, gonna, I was just gonna make a suggestion, I think, because I, I hear what we're all saying and I think we can come up with, because I deal with this a lot when you're dealing, these are, this is more like vision. This is like high level, this is 30,000 feet. Right. And I so think if, yeah. if, so let's keep it at that. But that doesn't mean that we don't need to get to that level of specificity. So what, what might be in our best interest, and what I would throw out there, is that we agree that this is the vision, these are the things that we wanna work on, and then for every one of these, we come up with, okay, what is the scope? What is included in that? Is that um, you know, crafting what the design is going to be on this item so that it's ready to, to go to town meeting and be approved? Is it uh, you know, building a building? Is it, whatever it is, let's come up with those things. I don't think we're gonna come up with that here, but I think what these do is we say, here's the high level vision of where we wanna go. This is gonna spawn individual projects, if you will. Some will be under Matt's control, some will be working with some other folks, but then we, we articulate that. We put those down and so that they are specific and they are measurable. 
Can I just add a, just a point of clarity? Uh, yes, let me know where I am. Vice Chair Chairman Benke. Um, these are the select board's goals. Separately, just because my second meeting here, what is the review process for Matt Hansen specifically? Are it these goals? or is it an entirely review process separate that we do in industry? I've had 50 people working for me, I have to give reviews, all this crap, I'm sorry, all this stuff. The idea is, what is his specific review period? What is the measurement and the stuff that we add? Is it this stuff? These are our goals? Or are these his specifically? Well, I'm specifically so asking. Let me put it this way, they're our goals, yep. and they're his goals. Okay. He's going to do them, but yep. you know it's just With like you're, you know when you're, you're when you have employees and, yep. and, and you have a manager, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have goals that you tell your employees to go do it. But exactly. when you, when you, in the end, who's the manager going to? Who's going to blame me? Accountable. It's going to be right. you. So so I just look at bring up fourteen again. You don't need to change thirteen, right? Yep. Support the establishment and progress of the master plan implementation committee. How about just create the framework? So the master plan committee can be implemented. See how we just worded it around? Yeah, create the framework. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's, if, I mean, all we're doing is we're saying these are the, to me, the master plan implementation committee, are these volunteers or residents? So the master plan implementation committee is um, board members and residents. The Tingsboro Land Trust is a little different because it, you're essentially helping, we're helping to create an organization that will then no longer be a part of the town. It's very different from any other committee mm -hmm. because it can't be a town organization if we're gonna be putting our land into it. Um, but we've done some of the lead work, leg work already, um, getting like bylaws from other communities that have land trusts and found but interested residents wanna do it. that's the work that you're it. doing. So that's yeah. the support, right? So to, for um, uh, select woman Winnistrom, it's, I think that's, when w that's <coughs> the detail that we would then break out sessions to say what we're doing. So I like the, the 30,000 one, but these are just high level goals, but there's gonna be four or five bullets underneath them that specify, okay, there's bylaws that are needed to create the um, land trust. I have to herd cats and residents, right? Whatever that is, you know, I mean, th we're gonna be doing these things, but there's your high level goal. Right. Because you, yeah. you can't control everybody outside of your purview, but you can create the framework mm -hmm. and you can create stuff or not create, you can pursue those things that allow the enablement of that. So you're setting up the framework again and you're ensuring that, okay, I've done this piece, but I need other people to participate in it. So that's what we would dig into for the sub goals, if that is worded correctly. Go ahead, Matt. I was, I was just gonna say, I think, um, if you remember last year, for example, we did a mid-year update in the December, January timeframe. Yeah. We gave an update on the goals and the purpose I had done that was to make sure that the track and the progress we were making would meet the expectation because the goals were very similar to this. They were 30,000 foot, which I think is important to just have that list of really priorities, goals, et cetera. Um, have no issues and I think it would actually benefit this conversation if. I either provided that update or we had a work session quarterly, maybe not an extra meeting, but at least quarterly, rather than wait till halfway through the year, another two months, I can let you know for each of these goals, they're gonna get broken broken down in sort of a report on where we're going with it. So, you know, on one hand, we could take each of the goals and try ahead of time to write exactly what the issues are, but if we're meeting regularly enough throughout the year and it's a joint collaborative process, and I can say on every one of these goals, every even if it's every meeting or every two months, um, which would be every three or four meetings, the progress I'm making, you could tell me throughout the year we're not making any progress on the land trust. You've, you know, you've said you're supporting them, but what have you done? But if I can put, I sent the bylaws to five residents who sent they're interested. Um, I gave them the contact information for our attorney to draft it. We had a meeting with the Groton Land Trust. I'll start putting those things under there as the progress report. And if that progress doesn't jive with everyone's collective you know, vision, I think we're gonna see it pretty clearly yeah. as we write progress reports more regularly. And that was, you know, really my thought, again, behind it. I mean, you, you never establish a goal where you don't have kind of then steps to achieve it. And, and because the word support could mean mm. 
so it's a different to people, the clearer we can be on some of these, then the expectation for all of us is set. It's not just, you know, I view support as, yep, I support it, you view support as actually doing something behind it. You know what I'm saying? Because, again, at some point in time, whether it, it could be tomorrow because somebody's hit by a bus and we have to replace someone, or, you know, at next year's election, when there's this kind of conversation and work behind it, everybody comes in having the same level of expectation about what can be done, and we're all on a path for success. And the, to, to answer your questions like Moran about um, the town administrator's performance evaluation, um, in the past, uh, there's been a narrative section, and um, the chairman of the board would typically accept comments from the other board members. But typically out of the main goals, which are some of them are a combination of Board of Selectmen and Town Administration goals, some of these are more clearly, um, you know, in, in my wheelhouse, um, up, like finalizing the munis conversion, including payroll, treasury collections, that's going to be 99% me, not you. So that might be one that gets called out in my review as like one of my five priority goals mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, the security audit and a few of these other high level things. I'm going to provide support to the different departments you know, working with the Board of Assessors on, um, you know, abatement programs, that's going to be something that maybe a few selectmen are going to be involved in, some subcommittee meetings and some assessors and things. That's going to be a little bit more of a board goal. So on my review at the end of the year, I think I'll be essentially graded on, on all of these, but in the past we've pulled a few out that were more clearly intended for the town manager and more of a priority. Um, and we can, you know, continue to tweak that process. I've been... Uh, actually, the chairman had asked me to look at some review procedures that other managers in the area have. I think in preparation, really, for the town manager change, because that may change the review a bit, I'll be more responsible for staff, for example, more responsible for contracting. So I have some examples from other communities, and, you know, sure. we'll sure. probably yeah, I be looking at that. I just think generating the discussion yes. is, is and, key and here. And, and so, as Matt said, I, I asked him to start looking at some some other towns and how they have, <coughs> you know, you know, looked at their town manager when they went through a review process uh, to be able to bring that back because it wasn't as formal as as I've seen a lot of other uh, towns have done yep, yep. Uh, when I've seen the report. So uh, I think it needs to be a little bit more formal. And I think it's kind of like saying what we're going to plan to do, uh, and as the year starts progressing, we'll start bringing that forward for everybody to discuss uh, what the correct or what the new process really should be. Perfect. Um, you know, Matt actually hasn't had a review in a couple of years, so uh, we want to get something uh, more formal. Uh, you know, and so you know, these goals are one thing that will go into it, so uh, we'll know exactly what he has done and what he's been able to accomplish, and I think you know, that's what we'll do to go move forward. And you know, hopefully in the next, probably in the next couple of months, we should probably bring, you know, bring that forward, uh, what the review process should be. You know, yeah, discuss what the review process should be and everybody what everybody wants to do for the review. And I like the idea of the quarterly, quarterly update as opposed to mid-year, because yep. I I things too. can happen in three months. I do too. And uh, thank you. Thank you for the explanation, both of you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so I don't think we, we voted on this last year. It was really just a matter of, of a discussion and a continuing discussion. So if everybody's good with that, uh, we'll just move on. Mm -hmm. Okay, next thing on the agenda, approved fiscal year 2023 Board of Selectmen meeting schedule. <coughs> Town Administrator. Great, thank you. We went back, Shannon went back, and I think watched the narrative because there was a, a bit of discussion. We added the town meeting dates on here. Um, we went back and forth a little bit on the November, um, the November dates, but um, I think we're in good shape. There was, was it just one date we ended up changing, Shannon, can you remind me? <laughs> we went back and forth a few times. Yeah, uh, the one that we changed, um, I believe we added the seventh is on there. Um, yeah, and then we did the 26th, it looks like. I think there was discussion between the 21st and the 26th, but we went with 26th. And then we added the town meeting dates on there as well. And we also marked Juneteenth as a holiday mm -hmm. and Halloween. Set with schedule. 
Well, our schedule, do we, do we need to vote on this or we just all stop the signing schedule? Let's approve it. Typically we voted in the past to set the schedule. It can, it's subject to change um, based on right. the, the, the chair typically, but it's our intended schedule so we can post it online. I have a motion to accept the uh, selectman schedule. I move that we accept the selectman schedule subject to change. Second. <coughs> the motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstain? Passes 5 0 0. Next on the, the new business mm -hmm. application to the road race. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the first year the New England Port Cure is coming to the Bedford Lexington area. Um, they have a few different routes, and one of the routes is going to be coming through a portion of Tingsboro. Um, the Tour de Cure is a fundraising event and also seeks to raise awareness of diabetes and provide free information and resources on diabetes. Um, police and fire have been consulted, and they're supportive of the road, rate app, road race application conceptually, but they would like to see a final safety plan. They're working with Tim Wilson, who's the applicant, to get that plan, and Actually, we did add their preliminary map in today, but there's some construction work in Dunstable that's going to modify the route slightly. Um, I would certainly feel comfortable if the board wanted to approve the road race application form because this is the end of August, um, contingent upon public safety approving the final um, safety plan uh, and, and road realignment. It just may need to change based on some construction, but it's very likely going to go through the Dunstable Road area through about two miles of Tingsboro. Um, any questions about this? What, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. What, what roads are being closed and? So typically it's just, um, this is just the edge of Dunstable Road and they wouldn't typically close the road. I mean, they may or may not close the road. In the past, some of them have um, cornered off or coned off sections of road. So that's the, the specifics that the police um, department wants to work out with them but um, they're not asking necessarily to um, close the sections of the road, as far as I'm aware, my understanding. Because that road is not that wide. That's why I was like, you, you cone that off, you're shutting down one direction, mm. at least for a portion of it. That's why I was trying to figure out. Um, I mean, I'm fine with uh, there being a, um, uh, you know, a safety plan for it, and we don't know how many people are going to be going through that 100 mile stretch because we're only the we're only going to get the people that are doing the 100 mile stretch versus the other three options that are there um, <coughs> and we'll just have to fit riders are there from 11:30 to 2 is what they're thinking for that period of time or is that the my understanding, it looks like first riders enter town at 11.30 and the last riders exit by 2 p.m. 11.30 a.m., riders exit by 2 p.m. So for a two and a half hour period of time, that road is gonna be impacted. Okay, yeah, spray chalk, um, spray chalk 24 by 18 inch signs will be removed within 24 hours of passing through. Yep, 11.30 to 2. 150 was their estimate. And this is Dunstable Road going from like Front Corner all the way up into Hollis New Hampshire? Um, yep, going from Dunstable down into North Chelmsford. Okay, yeah, I mean, I see bikes on that road all the time. Times two and three, four bikes at a time, they're all riding together. Yeah, I think they're gonna have a few more than that. That's, that's all, I'm just wondering, I, I just wanna understand what the implications were in, in during that period of time. So definitely need police and fire to, to give their, you know, prove that safety plan and they would take those items into concern. I just want, I wanted to understand okay, what sort of um, duration this was gonna impact. We can certainly send a copy of the, the safety plan and the, unfortunately the applicant wasn't available this evening because he's traveling, but we can send you a copy of whatever he comes up with, police and fire, um, you know, just so you're more aware. For me, as long as, <laughs> Police and fire are good with it. I, uh, you yeah, know, I'm good. I, I'm going to be good with it, okay. but um, I just wanted to understand where that was. All right. <laughs> no other questions. I hope I did them justice, but <laughs> I just <laughs> had the same information. No, it's a great cause. I mean, I, I, I certainly want to support the cause, but by the same, I just want to know what I want to know and I want uh, residents to, to be aware. 
of that as well. I just did. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> question. question <laughs> power technical. Uh, Apologies. I, uh, I mean, I, my computer already went down, so thankfully I went down earlier in the evening um, and got the one that was charged <laughs> back up. Um, I, you know, I mean, I guess the difference, the question that I would would have liked to have known is, is the 150, uh, is that the total participants in the ride versus that's just what they s expect in the 100 mile ride, which is what will come through us? Because obviously if 150 total divided by the three rides, that's you're the diehard smallest group that's the that's coming through Tingsboro, so it could only be five to 10, or is it really the 150 that's gonna come through Tingsboro because there's 500 people in the race altogether? Because um, I think it makes a big difference. I mean, I travel that road a lot, and, and on Sundays you do see a lot of bike riders. If they're sporadic here or there and it's five people, it might not be an issue. If it's 100, it might be, right. might be an issue for that, that 11.30 to 2 p.m which is when I'm thinking a lot of people are out either running errands or coming home from errands or church or other things. So I guess that's the concern is what, what does that 150 look like coming through town in a two and a half hour period? Right. I'd have to get back to you with that particular answer. I can't really tell from there I, where I, I think stand. I think on the form, Mr. Chair, if I could just yes, go ahead. address Mr. Hansen. The, um, on the form, it said the number of people who they thought would be doing like the full 100 miles. And I thought it was 150. And the rest were going to do like the 15 mile, the 25 mile. <coughs> and that, to me, I'm extrapolating 150 are going to probably be going through Dunstable Road at some point. That's what this says. Or is it 150 total? I mean, what I'm looking at is just estimated number of participants, 150. But again, what I'm was there something further where it talked about how many go back up or not? each group or something? Or was that um, let's go back up? Yeah, like right here. Like, are some doing 15 miles? Are some doing 30? Like, how many are doing the 100 miles? Because those, those are the only ones who are going to be coming through town. Right. I think that's the question I don't have the answer okay. to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. But can we, can we vote to approve it? Contingent upon getting this answer. Yeah. And the police and fire approval. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should I make a motion? Are we okay with with the vote for that? I'm hearing yes. I move that the board of selectmen approve the road race application as presented, contingent upon police and fire department approval of a safety plan. Second. <coughs> motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Abstain. Passes five zero zero. West of Thomas, 50 Old Sing Road. Okay. This is just a modification to an existing special permit to construct an additional two uh, unit 4,800 square foot building to be used as building trade shops. Uh, I believe they have about 12,000 square feet of buildings already on the site, so expanding by about you know, less, less than 50%. Um, typically for special permit applications in front of other boards, the Board of Selectmen does not make a comment. Um, unless you feel strongly otherwise. I will open up for any comments or questions. Seeing none, I have a motion, please. I move to not make a comment. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Second. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. That passes five zero zero. Uh, contract approvals. Um, town administrator. All right, great. Terry has put together a nice memo for us. Terry Yoon, our health director. Um, so this is the renewal contract for our second year of the grant. Uh, it has enabled the Northeast Public Health Association, consisting of Tingsboro, Tewksbury, Chelmsford, and Bill Record, to hire a regional health inspector, a public health nurse, and contract a software program that allows us to do our food inspections and manage the data digitally. The regional health inspector has completed most of his training, is now doing most food and housing inspections here in Tingsboro. He's been using the food inspection program to do inspections and capture data. He will continue to get training on other aspects of health inspections, such as pools, camps, body art, complaints, etc. cetera. Uh, the public health nurse has helped the Tingsboro Public Schools in Tewksbury with contract tracing for COVID-19. 
following up on other communicable diseases, run blood pressure clinics in Tewksbury, and has come up with health and safety programs such as Sun Safety. She just completed the mental health first aid, heart health and CPR instruction training, and will be running related programmings. So we would like to continue these services and ask the board to approve the fiscal year 23 public health excellence grant contract. Any questions from the board? <coughs> Matt, um, this seems like a very positive thing. It's been working great, no no drain on anything. No, I know, you know, it's funny you ask that because we were a little, um, you know, you're always curious when you bring a new grant program on and the additional staff, is it gonna be more work to manage the staff than it's worth? But I would say overall, the net positive has been great. Um, you may remember that our Board of Health Administrative Assistant actually left um, shortly after the grant period started and having a few of these extra people was actually great for Kerry because normally she'd be going out on health inspections so she couldn't step in but because we had a health inspector now helping her out she had some time to help fill in and interview and train the new person so it seems to be running pretty pretty smooth and the help is appreciated good thank you. that's what I thought I wanted to make sure yeah. <laughs> any other questions from the board can I have a motion please move that the board of selectmen approve the fiscal year 23 public health excellent grant contract yeah. second a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. It passes 5 0 0. Littlefield Library, roof replacement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this board may remember that last year the town was awarded funding for an exterior restoration of the Littlefield Library through the Mass Historic Commission's Preservation Grant Round 27. This funding, as well as a match from the Community Preservation Committee, allowed us to restore the front facing roof with original slate conduct significant masonry work and repaint most of the exterior of the building. Our intention at the time was to also replace the rear facing roof, which is currently just asphalt shingles. Unfortunately, due to the market at the time, we simply didn't have the funding. Um, however, I'm pleased to share that the town was awarded $40,000 from that same program through the round 28 grant. That combined with a $40,000 match that was approved at the last annual town meeting from CPC will allow us to completely redo the rear roof so that it will now match the historically accurate front roof. Um, included in the packet is just the standard state contract that needs approval by the board tonight. If approved, we'll put the bid out, uh, the project out to bid in August. The state has a very strict timeline, so you can't do anything before you get to that point. Um, but the first step is for the, the board to accept the contract tonight. <coughs> and obviously the historical commission is supportive of this project. No explanation, any questions from the board? Cyclone Lindstrom. Um. Considering, I mean, I know that the who's ever hired will have their own insurance since, and, and things like that since we're not insuring that building against any loss, but should the Littlefield they? Littlefield is, the Littlefield Library is oh, insured. The Littlefield Library, yeah. so it's just, what, the what, Winslow, the Winslow School. Winslow is not it. currently okay, covered for Okay, so the Littlefield property. Library is covered. Perfect. Um, the, but again, knowing that we're looking at that site as a potential for the public safety and potential, what would putting all this money into it then potentially, you know, do we put all this money into it and then all of a sudden we can't do anything with that building? You get where I'm going? Because that is one of the sites that they're looking at and I believe in order to make it work, we would have to demo the buildings up there. The, at least the preliminary discussions we've had on the Public Safety Building Committee would be if the Public Safety Building was put at that site, they would either work around the Littlefield Library or slightly relocate it on the site, but keep that building intact. Um, so I, I, at least the discussions we've had currently, there are no plans to demolish that building. Um, there have been talks about the fact that it would be just significantly cheaper and easier with the Winslow School to demolish it and rebuild a new public safety building in its likeness. But they've anticipated that the Littlefield Library could either still be some type of annex building or an office. Maybe um, the use would change, but that building is not anticipated to be demolished. And does accepting this grant in any way restrict what can then be done? So for instance, when we've accepted grants for the library or this building, it we've had very specific conditions under then what can be, what could, you know, so for instance, if library gives us that money, we can't do anything to that library portion of the building for X period of time because they've invested money in it. You would not be accepting any conditions that don't exist that you didn't accept when we accepted the round 27 grant. 
So when we did the round 27 grant, we do have to put a preservation restriction on the building, but that was done already as a part of the last grant application. So there'll be whatever you could do before accepting this grant to that building, you still will be able to do after accepting the grant. And does this extend that period of time or they're in perpetuity? They're in perpetuity. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Can I have a motion, please? I move that the Board of Selectmen accept <coughs> the $40,000 MHC Preservation Project Round 28 grant and authorize a town administrator to execute the required agreement. Second. Move a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining. Passes 5 0 0. Coburn Road Shared Streets Contract. Thank you. The board will remember that, it's, that at its meeting in June, it accepted a grant and authorized a contract with the Massachusetts Department of Transportation for $135,000 for the Coburn Road sidewalk extension project. This project will see the addition of sidewalks from Lakeview Ave to Beach Street, as well as the installation of a bus shelter and a bike rack. The project went out to bid in June. Bids were due back on July 6th, and we received four bids on the project, with the lowest bid coming from Ray Contracting. Ray has performed several projects in Tingsboro with no issues. Their bid was $157,790. It is over the grant amount. However, Jake Swicker, our town engineer, has identified additional funding that he has available in his operating budget to cover the, ex the additional expense. Um, sometimes if a project is over budget, we'll go back out to bid and hope that it'll come back lower. We don't have the option with this to, to change the scope of the project because it's funded by a state grant. Um, so there is really no advantage to going back out to bid. We should just accept that the price will just keep going up. Um, so all we're looking for tonight is approval of the contract. We would hope to complete this work by the second week in September. Most of the materials, including the bus shelter, are already here in Tingsboro. Um, so it'll just be a matter of getting on the contractor's schedule. Any questions from the board? Mr. Chair, um, question on the um, supplemental chapter 90, was that uh, coming from the extra kicker that they threw in for the uh, winter or whatever, what do they call that one? It was a part of that 216, yeah, the wrap, wrap thing, right? Yeah, basically that money, th this amount of money that we'll need for this project will come out of our regular chapter 90 allotment, which will then be supplemented in that exact same amount from the rapid recovery funding. Okay. I just want to make sure that because I, I haven't seen where that's fit in the, the budget and any of that yet. So, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Can I have a motion, please? I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the contract with Ray Contracting for $157,791 for the Coburn Road Sidewalk Extension Project as presented and authorize the town administrator to execute the required agreement. Second. Move a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That passes 5 0 0. Town Hall Roof Replacement, Baker Way Column. Yes, um, the Capital Asset Management Committee and ultimately town meeting authorized $200,000 in this year's capital plan for the replacement of the roof on this building. Uh, it is original, it's outlived its useful life. We released an invitation for bids for this contract on June 1st and opened bids on the 22nd. We received a good amount of bids, 10 bids from qualified vendors. The lowest and responsible and responsive bid came from JJS Universal at $148,000, so relatively under budget there. Um, the work on the contract will include the complete removal of existing asphalt shingles, installation of new shingles with a life expectancy of 30 plus years, and they will also perform roughly 50 feet of wood trim repair on select areas of the building. If you walk around, you can easily pick out the areas. We did check references on JJS Universal. They all came back positive. They do a lot of work for our local housing authorities, but additionally, they did the elementary school roof project in 2021, and I spoke to the school department and they were satisfied with the work. If awarded tonight, we will get on the contractor's schedule as soon as possible. It's roughly a two week project, so it'll be done by the fall. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Seeing none, can I have a motion please? I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the contract with JJS Universal for the Town Hall Roof Replacement Project valued at $148,000 and authorize the Town Administrator to execute the agreement. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That passes 500. Roads Project, always a good topic of discussion. <laughs> Take her away. Uh, included in the board's packet tonight is a contract with Allstate's Construction Group for the 2022 Roads Project. 
Um, the details of this project were presented to the board by the town engineer at a few meetings ago, but essentially it will include 3.48 miles of roadway that will see crack ceiling only. That includes sections of Dunstable Road, Long Pond Road, and Frost Road. Uh, it's got a service life of roughly 11 years, and it's part of our larger plan to preserve roads before they fall into terrible condition. Additionally, the town will utilize a rubber chip seal on Locust Ave and Farwell Road for a total of 2.2 miles and a service life of 22 years. And then roughly 1.8 miles of roadway on Appaloosa Circle, Morgan Way, Shetland Circle, Palomino Drive, Mustang Road, Arabian Way, and Althea Ave will receive a rubber chip seal with a microsurface for a surface, uh, service life of 26 years. Uh, rubberized chip seal is a stress absorbing membrane type of service treatment that creates a highly durable wearing surface for demanding pavements. There will also be a thin overlay of asphalt on top of the chip seal to make it a little smoother. An invitation for bids for this contract was released on June 1st and bids were opened on June 16th. We only received one bid for this uh, project and that's from Allstate's construction group. Our engineering department checked references on the contractor and they all came back positive. The total contract value is $963,095.30, which will be funded by a mix of Chapter 90 funding, road improvement funding allocated through the marijuana excise tax revenues, and the operating budget for street improvements. Um, if awarded tonight, we will mobilize and get some of the work completed prior to the end of this paving season, but similar to the Jacks Road project, they will have to come back in the uh, spring to finish the project. Thank you for that. Any questions from the board? Mr. Chair, yes. quick one. Um, this is all materially the same as what Jake had presented, so nothing no change. different. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions for the board? Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion, please? I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the contract with All States Construction Group for $963,095.30 as presented and authorize the town administrator to execute the required contract documents. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. That passes 500. Appointments. Okay. At the last meeting, the selectmen held off on appointing a representative to the Capital Asset Management Committee because we didn't have a full board. So it's your opportunity this evening if anyone would like to volunteer or volunteer someone else to serve. Selectman Elzer. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, so I was on Capital Asset Management Committee. I was chair of it last year, and um, I thought that we did quite a bit, but I still think there's some more work, so I would certainly uh, volunteer to represent the Board of Selectmen on capital asset uh, for another year. Great. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I, I'd like to volunteer too. Um, just so everybody knows, uh, this is actually, it's been a lot more work the past year, uh, and we have the ARPA funds and everything else, and we were just, we're kind of just in the process of redoing what the process is for capital asset committee. Uh, so uh, there, there's a more work to be done, but we started that. Um, so I, I would also uh, entertain continuing on that for one more year. Uh, I move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Eric Eldridge and uh, Ron Cohane to the Capital Asset Management Committee for a term effective immediately and to expire on June 30th, 2023. Second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. It passes 500. Um, unless something last minute came in, uh, we don't have anything for the representative of LRTA, so uh, we'll push that off uh, for one more meeting. Uh, board of Health number. You'll remember at the last meeting we postponed this to provide the Board of uh, Health the opportunity to interview Aikau Amba, and they've successfully completed that and voted to recommend um, their appointment to the Board of Health immediately. Um, it will become effective after it's also voted and ratified by this board and the term will expire at the next town election. Uh, any questions? Seeing none, we have a motion, please. I move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Ikao Amba to the Board of Health effective immediately and for a term to expire at the next town election. Second. A motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain, that passes 500. Agricultural Commission member. I'm just looking to reappoint Gus Gamritz to the commission for a term expiring June 30th, 2025. Any questions from the board? Any motion, please? Move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Augustus Gamritz to the Agricultural Commission for a term effective immediately and to expire on June 30th, 2025. Second. Motion and second. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. That passes 500. 
Affordable Housing Trust, town administrator designee. Yes, the trust um, is either the town administrator or designee. I'd like to appoint Eric Salerno, the town planner and economic development director. Uh, we were both going to all of the first, well, all of their meetings up until their last meeting in May when it just felt a little staff heavy to have two staff members on that committee supporting them when we were both <laughs> meeting ahead of time, discussing it, and then at the meeting. And um, he's more than capable to provide the staff support. Um, they work very closely with the planning board, and Eric is already servicing them. So it was just more natural for him to be the actual voting member since he was going to be going to the meetings anyways. So just would like the Board of Selectmen to approve that. Didn't clarify in the trust bylaws whether it needs to be approved if it's town administrator or designee. So I designated him for the last meeting, but we wanted to make it more official by having you approve the appointment. Any questions from the board? I have a question. Question from the winner's committee. So if if Eric provide in his current capacity provides you know the kind of staff support for that, does it create any kind of conflict that he's you know providing the staff support and then a voting member <coughs> that you know where. You know, some committees, I, I know, you know, staff are voting members, but they're typically also not staffed by that member. So does that create any kind of situation that might be uncomfortable for the committee where Eric's doing the staff support of it, but <coughs> then would have a voting member capacity? That would be my only concern. I think, I think that's a really good point, and I think maybe, um, you know, we, the board, and speaking with Eric and the trust, we can reconsider next year if it makes sense. Their whole first year and their, their first few meetings and the remainder of fiscal year 23 is mostly going to be the development of the committee, the further defining their goals, establishing their bylaws, um, seeing if the CPC wants to support them with seed funding. Right now, they really don't have the funding to be an active trust, so it's going to take them probably a good year to get up and running. Once they have some funding available, if a few more projects come in and some developers don't want to build their affordable units and they start writing checks to the trust and the trust needs to decide which other developer in town is maybe going to get some money or which nonprofit, it might make sense at that point for by next year to, to take Eric off if he's going to have to then you know, service some of those projects that come in front of the town. I think for the first year during this you know, growth phase, it won't be an issue because I don't expect they're going to be um, also in front of any projects. But I think we should take that in mind for next year. Any other questions? Mr. Chair, so would that mean rather than appointing him um, to expire on 20, in June of 2024, you'd say have it expire in June of 2023 and then reassess, that's your recommendation? Yes. I can live with that. Any other questions? I have a motion, please. I move that the Board of Selectmen appoint <coughs> Eric Salerno to the Affordable Housing Trust as a town administrator's designee for a term to begin immediately and to expire on June 30th, 2023. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Passes by 0 to 0. Uh, town, town Beach Attendance. Two. Um, the board will remember that last year we used CARES funding to hire, I think at the time we had three um, very part-time attendants that police the parking requirement that you have a, a tag at the town beach. We've seen over the course of the last few years that that beach is getting used, especially after we renovated it in 2020, um, quite dramatically. If people don't have the parking passes, that parking lot is very small. They're parking along the street. So Allison is looking, Allison Page, our recreation director, is looking to appoint two people to that position right now. She uh, has funding in her operating budget, so this isn't, we're not using ARPA, CARES obviously is not an option anymore, um, to pay them. And she's only utilizing them this year on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays where we know that it's going to be very hot. In the past, we were doing it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, regardless. We have the posting up here at Town Hall. It's been on our website for some time as well. We have two people who are interested. Michael O'Mara is a resident of the neighborhood. He also was a parking attendant last year. And Glenn Cawson um, is also a resident of the neighborhood. Both of them have submitted letters of interest and both of them are available to work the, strength, you know, the hours that we use. The position is $16 an hour. It's less than 12 hours weekly. And again, this would likely last just until Labor Day. And it is only on days that uh, we know we will be busy down there. And it has helped reduce people that are parking on the street, blocking neighbors' driveways, and, and uh, 
rerouting people who are not from Tingsboro that are attempting to park in the parking lot. Thank you. Uh, questions from the board? Nope. Seeing none, could I have a motion, please? <laughs> I move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Michael O'Mara and Glenn Clausen to the position of beach attendant for up to 12 hours weekly at $16 per hour on an as needed basis. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. This passes 5 0 0. Uh, we're at the selectmen report. Uh, Councilwoman Livingston. None at this time. Councilman Ryan. Zero two. Um, well, I'm not sure if this is the, the spot, but I know in our correspondence there was the thing that came around from uh, MMA mm -hmm. relative to the, um, the, the unfunded mandate from the Commonwealth relative to um, all meetings being hybrid. Um, I, I'm very concerned about that and the impact to us and how we run all of our meetings. Um, I would like to see us as a board draft a letter to our representatives strongly uh, indicating our opposition to that, it, the, the way it was handled, the impact to us is all very um, negative to, to the town and other towns mm -hmm. during this situation. While, you know, it's great to have, I, I do think that we should have the ability to have some meetings where people are remote having it across the board with uh, no mechanisms for the town to, to manage that uh, is, is untenable. And um, I think that we as a board should be supporting, you know, the, uh, the town administrator to uh, draft a letter on our behalf and uh, indicate our opposition to that or, you know, we can, we can draft that letter and send it. Yeah, probably with um, we could send a draft back out with any additional comments, maybe directly back to you know myself or the chair for in the chair for final approval. So I think that's a good idea, good idea. I neglected to bring this up, but given that this session ends in a few weeks, they may plan on voting on a compromise bill very soon. So we probably can't bring this back to the next meeting with a final letter. Sure. So can I make a motion that we authorize Matt to draft the letter, run it through the chair for approval and get it sent out. Will we allow him to make a motion on that? <laughs> <laughs> it was in correspondence and it's. Could I ask a question about, could I just ask yeah, a go question? Ahead. I mean, is, is it truly a hardship for us? I mean, we've been providing remote and hybrid options for two years. So I, I guess, is it, is it a hardship for us to do it? So, so I mean, part of so here, here's the thing: the way the legislation is drafted, at least as far as we understand it, and we don't know how it would be finalized, is we've had um, hybrid meetings where it's set up as a hybrid. The media staff knows ahead of time, and it's easy to set up a waiting room and allow people to come in and out. Um, I think the difficulty or the concern would be we have a lot of different committees in town that either don't do hybrid meetings, don't have a lot of public input. Um, don't have as much maybe staff support when they're conducting their meetings and if they need to have a, a public you know virtual option to have somebody to manage that for every meeting when there may be nothing on the agenda um, mo most of our meetings unless you're a regulatory board like the planning board conservation or, or the board of selectmen that have special permits nothing on your meeting you don't have to allow public input anyways public just have the right to watch so they're adding something that, you know, even today isn't, you know, really required, allowing remote participation. Um, and to do it at all times, not knowing if people are going to be using it or not, it would almost be like requiring us to set up a hybrid meeting for every single meeting. And we can do that now, and we have done it, but we ask applicants if they can come in person to do that now, and we try to restrict it only to times when it's needed because it does – the logistical burden of making sure it's done properly. Um, we could get into an issue where if there's an issue with Zoom and we wanted the public to come in, what does that do to the committee meeting? Um, so we need it to be perfect and working every time. Um, you know, where I think we're fortunate here in Tingsboro, we're probably large enough that we could facilitate it if we have to. Um, I imagine some smaller communities would have a, a much more difficult time. Um, 
but it is a pretty large logistical lift to have to set it up for every meeting and make sure you know the recording everyone can hear who's calling in they can hear the people who are speaking in the room etc you know because when you think about it right now our service that we do to record these meetings this is purely a courtesy in our local bylaw that you know we want all of our meetings recorded um, to require the public to then necessarily be able to call into all of our meetings is not something we're doing currently. So those are some thoughts. I, I, you know, I just see that this is the wave of the future for a lot of meetings. And I am I can see us, you know, saying I, I not supporting an unfunded mandate of it and, and focusing on that aspect. I wouldn't want to see us embellish what is potentially not 